We be live. We be live. <laughs> okay, guys. Today we're gonna re be focusing our live stream on reviewing Ali Dava videos. What do you think? This is, by the way, Ali, uh, Harris Sultan. Do you think is this true? What I'm saying is true. Ali Dava is the biggest Islamic YouTube channel in the whole world. Is that correct? No, Mufti Menk. How many? How many does Mufti Menk has got? Uh, yeah, but in Ooh. terms of view, viewership, yeah, Ali Dawa has to be the biggest because his engagement, every video gets tons more views. I, I, oh no, hang on. In the Urdu sphere, I know Engineer Muhammad Ali Mirza, but that's Urdu. He's got two point mm. five million, and every video crosses over 100, 150,000 views. Oh, okay. So I have to adjust that statement to the yeah, largest in the English, English. English. Yeah, and, yeah, and there might be some um l l l look at this one um and, and and i like him he like well i can't say that but look at this this guy 2.28 million and he's destroying the traditional sectarian islam and look at this Ooh. his videos get 216,000 views not this is going to cross 100,000 it's 306,000 so he's just killing it pakistani every pakistani cleric uh, like the Obandis Brailbys, they all hate him. They all hate, and yeah, he, he's wonderful. Mm. It's good. I bet you the fact that they hate him has uh, has something to do with his views going up. That usually helps. Yeah, he he he's de he's demolished all the secondary and th tertiary level of uh, schools of thoughts. He only goes mm -hmm. to the six books of uh, Sahih Hadith, and he's just showing because in India and Pakistan they're very superstitious. They have these secondary tertiary level what they call them saints we call them bazooks but they're kind of like saints so they revived right. islam in their own in their own understanding all right, 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 right let's focus let's focus on ali dava let's focus on ali dava okay because i want to because that's a lot a lot of detail that people might not be familiar with but i think now that we mentioned mufti mank i think we should go with this one because mufti mank is mentioned as well so what do you think we should do this one do you yeah, want to let's do. I haven't watched any of these videos. Oh, by the way, Mufti Menk yeah. got 4.3 million subscribers. So I don't know if Mufti Menk is. is oh, okay. Uh, the wow. So this is two of the. This seems. Are they going at each other? Uh, because this is like Mufti Menk event backfires, bad reaction. This seems like Ali Dava is going after Mufti Menk. So this is like two of the largest uh, Islamic YouTubers, um, one going after the other one. So that's pretty. That's pretty significant. Let's go. Let's watch this. What is the aim of Iman channel? What is the aim of Mufti Mank and them doing this event? Light upon light. Yeah? Is it light upon light or darkness upon darkness? Wow. Wow, that's a big, that's a big. If somebody prays one salah in the haram, okay, so it's as if they are prayed 100,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, what happened make... to the audio? Yeah, it's not as loud. Yeah? Is it loud? I can hear him now. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. My audio got connect disconnected because I am connected to the Bluetooth of my phone. There we go. Light upon light or darkness upon darkness? Yeah, forward. There we go. I got figured. Somebody yeah. plays one salah in the haram. Forward this part? You don't want to see this part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you want to see the ad? Okay, let's go past the ad. Okay. Hope you guys are well, inshallah, and having an amazing Eid. So, on the 27th night, Iman Channel every year does amazing uh, events where 15,000 people come, break iftar together, um, have iftar together, break their fast together, uh, do tarawih together, alhamdulillah, and this year was the same and i was invited specifically this year to do a speaker's corner style dawah stool and i was there alhamdulillah um, and i'm going to be talking about um you know myself personally uh, about these events what i think about them but in general there's been a uh, videos going around tiktok about people complaining i think there was a sister done a live i don't know i didn't really see it but she's done a live complaining about you know the benefits of this or the harms or I, I can't remember but i think it was very like you know criticizing that there's free mixing intermingling and all that kind Ooh. of stuff happened. so i'm going to touch up on this because it's so free mixing by the way for people who might not be familiar is that it's basically men and women get to be in the same place at the same time which is which they don't like this is so they're criticizing the fact that they are the mixing of genders were were allowed it's very, very important. Now, I work with Iman channel closely, so there could be a conflict of interest. But I fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, because Allah says in the Quran, speak the truth even if it's against yourself or your kin. Now, I have to be just. Now, I mean, if this was something that I disagreed with Iman channel, I would privately speak to them and give them the seer. I wouldn't even bother doing the video. But I'm not going to do that. Why? Not because I want anything from them. Wallahi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is my witness. Wallahi, billahi, tillahi. If I am saying this because I work with them, 
Okay, no. Anyone that knows me knows me what kind of person I am. I don't care who offers what to me or what benefits I have from them. I will speak the truth. I don't care if they stop working with me. I don't care. Yeah, Allah. This is very strange because he keeps on um, criticizing Sajid Libham for yeah. criticizing him openly. Right? But now he is criticizing Mufti Mink openly. He's like, if you're like, if you don't want to start fitna or start like a drama, why do you go and pu publicly tell me? Like the people who care, actually care, come and tell me privately and I adjust accordingly, but you are putting it out there, out there publicly. So just so that you could get views. But now he's doing the same thing that he criticized Sajid Lipham for. He's, he's doing the same thing to Mufti Mank. No, am I mi missing something here? No, that, that I, I don't really follow these guys much, but yeah, I, I have mm. seen him complain about Sajid Lipham. Um, and yeah. yeah, I mean, this is, this is, but maybe he sees himself as a new superstar because he's crossed the 1 million mark. Like he was very, he, uh, Muhammad Ijab was celebrating it on Twitter and, and he made this video of 1 million. And he's like, oh, has it, has it ticked over 1 million? And then he said, oh, it's, it, it's got nothing to do with views. I don't take that. You know, like I'm only doing this for a lie and to spread dawah and blah, blah, blah. So maybe, maybe he thinks he's, you know, like he's a, he's a million dollar league. So maybe, you know, a million subscriber mm. league, maybe he. It, it has earned him a right to criticize other people. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. What benefits I have from them? I mean, I don't think I don't think so because he he needs to have an Islamic justification. He brought a Quranic verse for that. Why can't Sajid Lipham bring the same Quranic verse to criticize you? Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll see. I will speak the truth. I don't care if they stop working with me. I don't care. Yeah, Allah provides my risk, mm -hmm. not you. So I want to be very open with you because I was there at the day and I'm going to tell you how it was. Okay. Now, first thing first, brothers and sisters, is that when I went there, I had my da'us too. Alhamdulillah, I was there and many people came. People came with Shubhat about the issue of Qadr. If Allah knows everything and we have a will, how does that work? We have sisters. Wow, that's, look at the people that show up. Look at this. Look how look at the drone this again. Yeah, I don't know. I was going to ask you. Is it, is it in... Events backfire. Look at this guy. He doesn't look like he. I don't know that was too. He doesn't look like he. He looks like he's happy being there. Came, came there. Look, he's like, get me out of here. Look at this. <laughs> like, boy looks bored. Everybody else is contemplating. Why is he holding his hands like this? Why is he holding his hands like this? Is it, aren't you supposed to, yes. like, uh, underneath your belly? Like, you, your hand position should be like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. This is you. This is you guys. The Sunnis do this. Shias don't even do that. What do What do you guys she, do? She has put their hands down. Yeah. Well, you they don't they don't, they don't they don't join their hands. No, they don't. They put their hands down. I know girls are supposed to go like this, and men are supposed to hold the, like that's that sunny. The, around the belly button. Yeah, yeah. That's I know, but, no, but but I'm saying even amongst them, I'm saying these guys are all Sunnis. But look at look at the guy with the funny face. Like he's holding like that's folded mm -hmm. arms. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Like he's not taking it very seriously. You're right. Like everybody else is holding it properly, but he's like, you know, he look. His face is like not into it. Every this look at this other guy here. He's like meditating. He's meditating. He's meditating. <laughs> but he's like, yeah. He's like, yeah. Whatever. Whatever. Well, what are we getting whatever. out of here? What are we getting out of here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But they should cutter if Allah knows everything and we have a oh, look at this. Look at the wow, there's a lot of drone footage. See, a lot yeah. of this is a lot, a lot of Islam is especially in this modern da dawa scene. A lot of that is actually showing off force, it's like showing yeah. off basically. It, that, that's why they, they go at these popular tourist spots and like historical buildings, they go there, do their taravis there, and they do all these mm. like it's a show of force, it's a show of dominance. It's like Hey, look how many of us there are. Look, we're coming. Mm. You know, it's like it's all. It's. I think it's there to intimidate the other side. Maybe the Christians, but obviously but, it doesn't intimidate atheists. I mean, like, yeah, whatever. But. Not to show their strength, show their numbers. Yeah, but you know, uh, does it? I don't know if Sunnis is like that or they're like this. But what I see here, I could smell something as well. Well, I'm. It's visual, but I could smell. Um, you know. Uh, feet and you know oh, sweat. I'm drinking breath. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that is is this this is it stinky here? Do you assume it's stinky here? Because I'm assuming that if you open the door and go here, the this the whole room stinks. Or I, I don't know if that's true because that's my bad experience with mosques. Like the whole place always every mosque. Like really? this is how our yeah. Every time we open like in Iran, 
every mosque you go to or every prayer place you go to, you just open the door and just this stank of like unwashed feet and socks is like horrible. It's just disgusting. No matter how much um, air freshener you spray, it just doesn't go away. So I associate the gathering of Muslims with like stinkiness all the time. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I don't have any, any, any bad experience. You don't, don't have? Okay, no, so it's Iran then. Just Iran. It's an Iran it's a Shia thing. thing. It's okay. a Shia thing. It's a Shia thing? Okay, okay. Well, how does that work? We have sisters coming about hijab. How can I start, you know, he wearing hijab? Uh, we had, uh... <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm saying he probably stinks. I don't know. I'm joking. I'm joking. I don't know. <laughs> no. don't you have know. a will. How does that work? We have sisters coming about hijab. How can I start, you know, wearing the hijab? Uh, we had uh, brothers and sisters coming that saying that they're sinful, etc. Our own relationships, how can I make it halal? Wait, wait a minute. Is, talking is this? About? No. Okay, this is like what the event is about. And, um, there was people who were asking questions. There were two non-Muslims come came on the verge of accepting Islam. Um, you name it. So many different questions. A sister came about divorce, whatever it may be. You know, so much stuff, so much emotions. One of them was crying, subhanAllah. So alhamdulillah, it was very, very beneficial, alhamdulillah, what I, from what I saw. And the point is the following, guys. Yeah. Now, with this kind of stuff, you need to understand something. If we look at it from a perspective, now, for example, alhamdulillah, I've been practicing for about 10 years. Okay. I can say that, you know, I do the basics, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Now, if I go to these events and I look at it from my perspective, where I am now, yeah. Okay. And if you guys are watching this and you are pious or whatever it may be, and you are looking at it from there, the question I would ask you is, why are you even going there? I'll, I'll ask a very simple question. If you know, for example, there might be something that you might dislike to your taste. Yeah. For example, why are you going there? You should be in a better place. Yeah? If you believe that they were not up to notch or scratch or whatever they're doing, why are you even there? You should be in your house. I mean, especially a sister. I would say, why are you even there? If you're going to criticize it, why are you even there? The question can oh. be asked. You know, we can go down this rabbit hole. Oh my God, get to the point. You just yeah, said, what why is are saying? you even there? Like a million times. I think he's trying to get to a point. Like if you're criticizing it and you're there, you're being a hypocrite because if you don't like it, you can't be there. I don't know. It's not very clear, but let's see where he gets, where he's getting at. And be like, hold on, sister. Why even go in there without your mahram? Why even go in there without your husband? Even if your husband. Oh, so he's talking about the women who are going there by themselves without, without the mahram, without yeah. a without a male guardian. Okay. Yeah. Without a brother, without a husband. Okay. Down this rabbit hole and be like, hold on, sister. Why even go in there without your mahram? Why even go? Mahram for people who say without the mahram, he means like a, a a male member of your family as a guardian. Like, why are you just like walking there alone? There without your husband even if your husband was there why are you guys even there for if we're going to make it seem mm -hmm. as if this was an intermingling free mixing event where mufti Menk is promoting all this kind of stuff number one i'm going to say the following guys okay we need to get over our high horse because allah says in the, in the quran that indeed he found jew lost and he guided you yes okay now brothers and sisters you need to understand so maybe like he did a clickbaity where it seems like he's going after mufti Menk, but he's now it seems like he's trying to defend mufti Menk because it seemed like there was a reaction to all of this about why there was a mixing of mixing of genders at this event and he's like get off your high horse and don't be judgmental i don't know let's see where it's going understand get off this piety piety attack it's a piety attack okay in a nutshell i went on tiktok and i was thinking okay what's going on i went through a lot of videos okay i saw sisters there okay like on the tick so this is why we watch these videos because like this shows like we don't follow all these tiktok videos and all the reaction but if he's making a video about it it seems like there was a major backlash to the mixing of genders at this event right so somebody like here in the live chat is saying it sounds oh here um it sounds like he had a lot of potential what ex-muslims ex -Muslims asking him tough questions not ex-muslims i think this is a muslim on muslim kind of attack TikTok, I was just going and I was seeing what kind of people have come there. Okay. And I was just looking, like going through it and I was saying, okay, what kind of sisters are these individuals? I would press on their account and I realized some of them, I would like obviously press and I realized that they don't even wear hijab. So I would just go back to the videos and I realized there were people there who were not even practicing, who were not even wearing the hijab. Literally, one of the sisters who was wearing the hijab in the event, I saw it, I was thinking, what she's saying about it, how she found it. She found it very pleasant, the food, the atmosphere. And I went to her account and I zoomed back out because I realized that the sister doesn't forget wearing the hijab. She dressed very inappropriately. So I had to fly out her account. And I thought, subhanAllah. But it made me realize something, oh that God. this sister was not even forget wearing the hijab. She was dressed inappropriately in her account. Yeah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide on us. Okay? He's trying to make it clear that I saw 
like very um, revealing clothes on her account. But he was like, people might, he knows that people are like, hey, Ali, why did you watch that? That's Haram. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. He's like making sure that he covers that. I just saw it. I, I, I was out of there like ASAP. Yeah. I just saw it accidentally, okay? I wasn't like spending time there watching all these, like her in a bikini, her modeling. Don't, that's not what's happening. I, like, I didn't do, I didn't see all of that, you know, with the excuse of doing research. It's like, oh, I just saw it and I was out of there, okay? I promise. So that's but why I he's trying to cover his... But I think this is where he's this is where he's headed. I think his main beef is that first of all, why is it mixed? Because a lot of women there were there without their madams, without their male yeah. guardian. And B, he even covered that. He said, maybe even if you had your husband, why are you there? Why can't you ask these questions, whatever questions you have? You can ask them privately because yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, you can send an email to an imam, your local scholar or whatever, but is this like a star power? Are you struck by Mufti Menk's star power? That is Mufti Menk's promoting that. That's why I'm going to be there. So get off your high horse, this piety high horse. But, but I think what I started off as, that it seems mm. like Muslims are obsessed with projecting this image of huge numbers and strength. And I think he's actually going after that. That's like, there's no need for it. I th I, that's what I've gathered mm. so far. But I don't know. I could be wrong. He might. Because he's a bit, he's a bit clickbaity, though. He is a bit clickbaity. He's also not very clear. Um, but he just uh, like looks That's on TikTok, hard, yeah. looks on, yeah, looks on social media, and he just sees that there's a drama going on, and you know he speaks like the Quran, so it's a little bit vague, and it's vague enough for his audience to be able to get whatever they want out of it. You know what I mean? So that's a lot, one reason why I think he's so successful is because first of all, he he speaks very, you know, without a lot of intelligence which his audience are at a lower level. So, for example, this is why Ali Dava might do better than Daniel Hayraju, even though Daniel Hayraju uh, speaks a lot more, into, you know, intelligently. Cleverly, yeah. A lot of, yeah, a lot of, a lot of his audience, a lot of Muslim audience are like, it's just, it's, he's speaking above their level, right? But Ali Dava, he's just like, he's just like a random dude that is just talking about Islamic stuff. And, you know, people see like, this is, you know how, some adult videos where the man is not attractive gets a lot of a lot more views because a lot of is that not the reason very why we don't get men, enough views. Is that the reason why? Yeah, we no, don't no, get views? <laughs> no, 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 no. This is actually a thing because they can see like, oh, look at this not very not attractive man being with this really gorgeous woman. So they could see themselves in that position. Yes. If it was like a very, if it was a gorgeous man with like a six pack ab and something, they were like, they get intimidated. Yeah, I would like, never. Oh, of course, he's gonna get. Yeah. I'm, I don't look yeah, of like course him. Of course, he's going to get all the girls. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so this is kind of like that. This is kind of like Ali Dava. Like a lot of people are like, why is he getting so popular? This guy is like an idiot, right? Well, that's exactly why. Because it's at their level. They could see, they could relate to him. But again, but and that's why he speaks. For, yeah. But but I think we credit where it's due. He's a professional YouTuber. You know, like I know yes. you, you, you and I, we both know, like, because we've been doing YouTubing for quite a long time. But for him to consistently grow his audience and to consistently keep getting views by reacting to videos or whatever it requires to, you know, uh, to be a successful YouTuber. He has achieved that. Like, I mean, I'm looking at his, he's got like in the last 30 days, his views are sitting at about 8 million, 8 million views a month could mean anywhere between 16 to 20,000 pounds for a month. Mm. If, if mm. you've got adverts on and obviously he's got them on and then on top of that he gets uh promos as well so that's, yeah. a, that's a pretty decent amount of money he's making again i'm not going after it well i guess i should be because that is not supposed to be his goal as he said in his one million celebration video that oh it's not about my whatever why why have you got ads on you know so he's it's good money it's good it's good business 20 grand 50, yeah, let's yeah. just let's yeah, just go with the conservative estimate of uh, of fifteen thousand pounds because you get about two pounds mm -hmm. per thousand views, so and he's got eight million. So if he's getting sixteen thousand pounds a month, why? I think everyone would be compelled to keep churning out these videos. Right. Okay. Okay. Let's push. And I thought to myself, Subhanallah, if as a person who is practicing goes to that event, I can criticize a lot of stuff. I'm telling you, I could have. Number one, was there free mixing? Yes. Yes. Did I see people kind of intermingling? Can you say? Yes, there was. I'll be honest with you. I swore. So how, guys, this is so backwards. Like, I want to show.
But I mean, it yeah. sells. It sells. It yeah. works. This is this is exactly mm. the kind of product that they're selling, and it's working. This is why, especially in the English diaspora, Muslim diaspora living in England, and and I'm guessing the bulk of his audience comes from the UK diaspora, Muslim diaspora living in the UK, and they have very successfully radicalized this youth, Muslim youth in Europe. By telling them, by selling these conservative, conventional Islamic values of, you know, mehram, not mehram, women should be separate and, you know, brothers and sisters and sisters should not be there. You should cover yourself up, etc. It works. It sells. And this is what he's built his part, his audience on. So he's not going to do a 180 yeah. degree turn and he's going to say, well, sorry, by the way, you know, it's OK. Even though just um, just making a point. You look at, I saw a thumbnail where him and Hijab are sitting and they're advocating. I haven't clicked on the video yet where the thumbnail is very clickbaity. It says that don't tell your uh, wife that you have another wife. Like basically, and, and, the, and the woman uh, that is in the thumbnail, she's saying that, oh, that's cheating. But if you go back, he didn't even used to show his wife. He didn't even used to show a woman figure in a niqab because he was like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, this is haram. But now... He's conformed a little bit because he wants to sell his product. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wants to push the... Uh, he keeps on trying to push the uh, limits, the red lines that he's not supposed to cross. And then he watched what the, how the audience reacts. And I think this might actually be a strategic video as well in that sense because he's trying to, like, instead of saying, get off of my back, the, the more strategic to do is to go to a defense of another person that other mm. people are criticizing so that when it comes to his turn, you know, when people are like jumping on them, like when he's the, his turn to cross certain lies, he's like, they come and defend him as well. That would be strategic if that's, he has that yeah. long term plan in mind. Yeah, yeah. Did I see people kind of intermingling? Can you say? Yes. There was, I'll be honest with you, I saw this stuff happening. Yeah. Was it like everybody's doing it? Nonsense. Yeah. Now, let me tell you that somebody who has a good, who thinks from it. From that sounds like a strama. Was it like everybody was doing it? Nonsense. I don't think, I haven't seen the criticism that people have made on TikTok, as he's saying, but I, I, I wouldn't assume anybody would say like everybody was doing it. That would be a weird like criticism. I think like he's just strawmaning what the criticism is. Like people would be like, oh, why is there um, mixing of genders at this event? They wouldn't be saying like, why is every single person mixing genders like that's even that's not even a claim that you could make like what does that even mean right so but look at yeah look at the response. Saying, yes there was i'll be honest with you i saw this stuff happening yeah was it like everybody's doing it nonsense yeah. was it everybody was it doing it yeah so a single man showing up alone without talking to a woman would be enough for you to say that everybody was not doing it what a kind of a i don't know that seems like a dumb response yeah i don't know yeah I think he's like watering down the criticism. You know, I mean, he's like responding to something that people are not saying. Yeah. Now, let me tell you that somebody who has a good, who thinks from it from a perspective of, you know what? What are what is the aim of Iman Channel? What is the aim of Mufti Mank and them doing this event? Light upon light. Yeah. Mm. Is it light upon light or darkness upon darkness? I Ooh. believe it's light upon light. See, Ooh. see, this is very clever. Look at the clickbait. At the beginning, he wasn't very clear that if he's going after Mufti Mank or defending it. Yeah. He says, like, is it light upon light or is it darkness upon darkness? And he cut. He didn't say that, oh, where he's so people are like coming in for the drama. You're like, oh my God, Ali Dabba is going. I mean, look at the time. Yeah, look at the title. Mufti Mank events backfires. Bad reaction. Like, oh my God, Ali Dabba is going after Mufti Mank. So that's a really good clickbait. But now when we're watching it here. And I'm even like, the oh, excerpt. Really and even the excerpt that he yeah. put. He said, oh, is it light after light? Or go, uh, go, um, dark, uh, darkness, dark over darkness yeah. after darkness. Yeah. 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 Darkness. Yeah, yeah. Is it that? And then, and now he's straight away he's answered. But he, he cleverly cut that bit out. Because, yeah, it engaged yeah. people for five minutes. And, and as anyone knows... With YouTube, the longer you watch someone's video, the more it is recommended on other people's uh, recommendations. So, um, yeah, so yeah, 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 so there you go. He's got five minutes, yeah? Well, there you go. Yeah. Mufti Mank and them doing this event, light upon light. Yeah? Is it light upon light or darkness upon darkness? I believe it's light upon light. Why? Because the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said... So he's kind of saying the means, uh, the ends justify the means, right? Mm -hmm. He's like, look, yes. the guy is bringing people to faith. Um, I know maybe certain things are being done that is not perfect, but get off your high horse. Look at the look at the end results. So he's he's being a consequentialist here. He's like, look, the, the, we are bringing people to Islam. So what if a non-hijabi or a non-Muslim shows up and certain and genders are mixing? The end goal is so beneficial that we should forgive 
all of that. We should like. But he's but he's openly admitted that he said that. Uh, I don't know if you remember when there's a Leicester Square thing happened in between Hindus and Muslims, and hijab and these guys turned up there pretending to be as though they were the representatives of the Muslims. And some Muslims actually sent them away. They said, hey, you don't represent us. So they complained to them, hey, you guys are just clout chasers. You're just here for clout. Um, and then he said, I, I think I gave a reaction on that video, where he said, that, yeah, I, I do everything I can to draw people's attention because at the end of the day, my goal is to spread the message of Allah. So mm. all is fair, basically. You know, like if I do these clickbaity thumbnails or these little excerpts out, I, I, if I draw people's eyeballs, then... It's all fair because at the end of the day, I want them to hear my message. But so far, he hasn't actually said anything other than there's there's no there's no message of Islam that is given so far. He just created this 10 minute video to for the sake of his one million audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just well, I mean, he's also come, he's all I mean, he did say something. He's saying like why um, the, no, no, he's saying like, okay, there's certain things that are not perfect. But overall, this is so positive and get off your high horse and stop being so judgmental. That's what you say. Okay. Is that what he's saying? Okay. Yeah. Well, to, to be honest, I was yeah. actually lost. Like, I, I, I couldn't follow his chain of thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> I, you have I to get used to how the devil kind of speak. He's kind of all over the place. <laughs> so. But he's dragging. He's dragging. So yeah, is that yeah, all he no, said no. In, like, in, in these five minutes? Everything, nothing's perfect, but, you know. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, like, uh, yeah. He basically, somebody is like, so, uh, okay, yeah, there was gender mixing. I saw there were women that were more Muslim and people, women who had hijab there, but on social media, I went and checked and they were like very sexy. Um, <laughs> but I, I, <laughs> sexy sisters. And I was like, yeah, sexy sisters, sexy <laughs> non Muslims were there. They had questions. Okay, so yeah, so it was, was it perfect? Was it as 100% Islamic? No. But get off your high horse. Don't be so judgmental. This event is bringing people to Islam, so it's good. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Mm. The following, and I'm going to read it for you guys. Okay. He, the sal he sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said, "The most beloved places on earth to Allah subhanahu wa taala is the masajid, and the most despised places on earth are to Allah are the markets, the marketplaces." Now, what? The is is this an? Oh my God! This is a Sahih hadith by Abu Huraira. The messenger of Allah, peace and blessing be upon him, <laughs> said the most beloved places to Allah are the mosques. Okay. I mean, I can understand that. This is Islam, at, uh, you know, at the end of the day. But this second part is so dangerous. Because they didn't have back then pubs. They didn't have pubs in Arabia. They didn't have bars and discos and nightclubs. Of course, what's the other place where people could mingle with each other? Markets. Where else would you mingle with each other? Like strangers rubbing off shoulders. No, but this is, this is this is an anti-economic message. This is so horrible. <laughs> like, are you gonna no. this is this is this what this is what brings prosperity and wealth to, to any economic. society is the markets. Economic this is activity. so this is so dangerous. This is such a dangerous hadith. You know, I can no, go to any Muslim that is wait, can I go after every Muslim that is like making good money in the marketplace, trading? And we're like, get out of here. This is the most hated place by Prophet by Allah. You're in a hated hadith. place by Allah. This is a very good hadith. That needs to go in my folder of funny hadiths. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what's the hadith number? It's, it's what, uh, same as 671. Oh my goodness. This is actually yeah. very stupid because a lot of the, you know, they suck. And Nuria Khan says that they. The Islam just sucks joy out of your life. All kinds of joys that you can actually get. Women, this is probably one of the very few pleasures of life that they have. You know, like they can, okay, I'm just going to go and buy some vegetables. I'm going to go buy some groceries, okay? And now I can get out of this prison. But even that is being taken away from them. Umar took away women uh, women's rights to go to mosques. You know, yeah. Umar, Umar, Umar took that away, so... Yeah, it's just Islam is just designed to subjugate women. I've never seen this hadith before. I'm I'm glad Muslims haven't taken this hadith very seriously. This is the most dangerous, one of the most dangerous hadith I've ever seen. If it was <laughs> taken seriously, this is this is this is very bad for a country's economy. This is like this is one reason why Islam is bad for economy. The markets, the markets are exactly where prosperity and uh, is for society is built. Is is how you improve the well being of the people in a society. This is how you. This is how you progress. This is how you make everything better. It happens in the markets. 
I mean, this is an anti-Muslim hadith. All the Muslims that are making an income in the, in the marketplace, I could go and they're like, hey, you should get out of this place. Go to the What are you doing? Why are you spending your time in the place that is Allah hates? Stop trading in the marketplace and go to the mosque. You know how horrible this is? This is communist Islam. Even this is yeah, this is promoting this. poverty. This is yeah, well no. I mean they shouldn't be, but this is this is promote right. You said you, you actually I'm glad you said that poverty. This is promoting poverty. God damn. Okay. So yeah, please add that to your list of hadith and bring it up. Funny, funny so hadith. Just, and the more yeah, 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 yeah. Most despised place on earth are to Allah. You know, um, you should like make a chat GPT video of this. Like, make sure, like, are what do you think about the view that the markets are hate uh, the most hated place? Okay, and then the see what chat GPT says. And then the most hated place by Allah, the most hate, one of the most hated places by and and the, no, no, not the most one of them, actually, the most hated. No, I said the most, by Allah. Yeah. yeah, does the that most, mean yeah. no, but does that mean, I mean, clubs, brothels, yeah. pubs? Uh, gambling houses, casinos—they they are less hated than the markets. Well, they're market. No, they're markets because their trade is being happening there. Yeah. Okay, I get it. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, the exchange of goods and services. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> what are the markets? The marketplaces. Now, just bear this what? in mind. If we lived under an Islamic country, Islamic state, yeah, would there be markets? Yes, there will be markets. Is the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, forbidden markets? Because he would say clearly it's haram for you to go to the markets. No, he's not. He's saying that there are evil there. Now, if they're evil there, is there also good there? Yes. He didn't say that there were evil. He didn't say what the reason. You're, you're, you're ad See, this is what they do. The hadith says this is the most hated place by Allah. The most hated of all places. Allah. But now they just like, it doesn't make sense to them. So... So here comes the tafsir, the Ali, yeah, the added yeah. stuff that is the not the, that is not there. Yeah, like the, yeah, exactly. Like you're just adding stuff to the hadith that is not there. Like, but it makes sense though. Is... Yeah, I, uh, look, yeah, but just to be fair though, but why why are uh, markets the most hated places in the eyes? Does of it Allah? say? Yeah, I know it doesn't say that. He, yet this is why we say Muhammad is a poor. Author, or is a poor conveyor of message. He's a, he's a poor messenger yeah. because yeah, he's left it open to interpretation. And of course, Muslims who are so obsessed with honor and you know women intermingling with other men or seeing other men, it's not even mingling really. Like they're, they're not going there and, and and chatting up men. Imagine that in the seventh century mm -hmm. Arabia, just the woman goes there and she goes, hey yeah, hey hey handsome, how's it going? You know, I, I doubt she's having those conversations. But because they're so obsessed with controlling women, that they they want to they want to keep an eye on them. They they're watching like hawks. Whatever you say will be held against you, in, in, and you would be accused of adultery or uh, fornication or whatever you want to call them. So, um, yeah, but but that would be the logic behind it because it's like yeah, women are going to be there. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, it doesn't say. It doesn't say. Yeah, you're right. So yeah. can you think if it, if it says like it says it's not because it's haram. The markets are haram. Okay, sure. It doesn't say that it's because it's haram. But uh, but it still says that it's the most like you when you are there, I could just go and remind you, sir. Do you know that you are now spending a lot of time, okay, in the in the place that is the most hated by Allah, okay? <laughs> and think about this. Think about like the, during the day, during the day, yeah, how much? Like let's say you're a businessman or you're trading, you're selling fruits, okay, and that's your job. I'm mean, like, okay, how many times have you prayed? Sir, during today, like, okay, I pray five times a day. How much time do you spend inside the mosque every time you pray? I could be like, I don't know, 10 minutes, 20 minutes each time. Okay, so add that all together. Let's say like one hour every inside the mosque. How much time do you spend uh, selling your fruits? Um, seven like, hours. Okay, Eight seven hours. Seven hours a day. Like, oh, do you see what's happening here? You say, spend more time. Spend seven hour in the place that is hated by Allah than where the place that is most loved by Allah. Yeah. So maybe you want to equal. Let's see how dangerous that line of thinking and, is. Even yeah, but, even if yeah, even if the hadith doesn't say it's haram to be in the marketplace, but look look at your priorities. Look at where you're spending most of your time. You're spending more time yeah. in the hated place than in the loved place, and this is why exactly. Muhammad used to make up this stuff, you know. And that's why he came up with these rikat of swab of virtue. He's like, okay, if you 
pray this, then you're gonna get seventy times virtue uh, or the, the the points they call them, you know, like the, yeah, the yeah. virtue points. So so it's like yeah, so this is how they're going to extend it, and they're going to cover for Muhammad unless there's a hadith for it, like oh one minute of um a uh, 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 a minute spent one minute spent in a mosque is mm. equal to a, an hour spent in a market so you know, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, that's how they balance yeah. the equation <laughs> you know, just to cover his tracks another solution another solution okay is to turn your fruit store into a mosque so like hey anybody can come and pray here <laughs> what about cancel it Cancel that out. What if you're selling the co copies of the Quran and the books of Hadith in a market? Mm. Oh, it's still the most hated place. Hey, I'm selling Allah's word. Nah, still the most hated place. Muhammad didn't think yeah. these th things through. You know, he used to make stuff yeah. up as he went along. He just like, oh, he might have seen it in a market. He might have seen some women walking around, some men walking around. He would have been like, oh, this is horrible. This is a breeding ground for sex. I can see these people banging the shit out of each other. And there you go. Mm. <laughs> You're not gonna do it. So. Uh, oxymoron saying, "Isn't Musk also a market?" Kind of, it is. It's kind of is a is a place selling, that you're selling some good. <laughs> yeah, selling selling Islam. Islam. And I think, and I think this hadith has more to do with that than Muhammad, because again, uh, people must understand these hadiths was not uh, made by Muhammad. These hadiths were made mostly during the Abbasid period, and usually there's a politics or a power play behind each one of these hadiths. And if I had to guess, this is a hadith that uh, somebody that owns a mosque has made up. People that control the mosques have made up. <laughs> this is where, like, people need to spend more of the time inside a mosque and inside the marketplace. And this is just a, they just put their words inside Muhammad's mouth just to get more people to come to the mosque. I think that's, that's actually the reason behind it. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah. No, he's not. He's saying that there are evil there. Now, if they're evil there, is there also good there? Yes, there are people who are doing trade. There are people who are doing work. There are people who are going there genuinely to do shopping. Amongst them, are there people who want to go to intermingle, free mix? Yes. Now, remember, none of this, none of this is was inside the hadith. That was just Ali Dava putting words inside of Muhammad's mouth. Does Imam yeah. Channel have a responsibility on every single individual and put a CCTV camera on there? No. Because the dean says you are, as a person are accountable. Iman Channel did this amazing thing, and I believe it's amazing. Why? Because people from all different backgrounds, sisters who don't wear the hijab, brothers who are doing drugs, smoking weed, doing this. I spoke to so many people, so many people, and I thought, subhanAllah, this event is a full event of sinners, including me. We're all sinners, but we are trying to better ourselves. And when I spoke to them and I understood this, now was there free mixing happening? Yes. There was, there was happening, but how is that organizer's fault? If you've got a marketplace where people are going Sucking to shop, etc., and Huh? I'm saying yeah. sucking up big time, defending Mufti Mate. Yeah, yeah. Hacking up. I feel yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, that's what I'm that's what I was thinking just right now as well. I think he wants to get on his radar a radar, like radar, to yeah. show to you know. I think he knows yeah, him. Yeah, I yeah. think I'm pretty sure Mufti Mank knows it. Mufti Mank's got two and I a half. No, I know. I know, I know, but if Mufti Mank sees that Ali Dava is defending him, he might because they tried going after him before, like to get on his radar to maybe get a response from him, and they get no response from him. So now maybe if they suck up to him, maybe now they get a response from him. You know, mm -hmm. maybe if they see like, oh, maybe Mufti Mank is getting like a wave of attacks on him about for all these gender mixing and stuff, and now Ali Dava is here to the rescue, and Mufti Mank with his large audience must shine a light upon Ali Dava, and basically that would be collab work. Right. Exactly, and there's a, there, there's power yeah. dynamics at play as well. So it's like you know when two royal royalties get close together when they get married together, they they always look at okay, what are you gonna bring into this relationship? What are you gonna bring into this relation relationship? Mufti Mank brings his Mufti, his scholarly uh, prestige into it, whereas Ali Dawa is this representative of uh, Muslim youth and with huge audience, just like two mingling. Well, these guys are intermingling now. I <laughs> think that's our <laughs> purpose. Oh, that's haram. Yeah. <laughs> Not that kind of intermingling. <laughs> and people are talking to each other, whatever. How could By the way, think about how unnatural Islam is. Like men oh, and women decided. are supposed to be like talking to each other, have a normal relationship with each other, engage with each other, be friends with each other. A lot of these attitudes like that men have towards women that, you know, a lot of Muslims um, behave very incelish. Do you know what I mean? Like they they don't know how to properly communicate with the opposite sex, and sometimes it gets very toxic and sometimes very violent. 
Um, even if the violent acts that you know you see sometimes Muslims have to a woman, if it's not it's not uh, condoned in Islam, some of it, some of it is actually, but some of it isn't. But at the end of the day, all of it is is Islam's fault because of the lack of practice, lack of ability to just have normal communication with your opposite sex because you just separate them all the time. They just like they're aliens to you. They're like a completely. It's like. It's as if they're not just another gender. It just feels like they're another they're another species to them. You know what I mean? And this mm. is this is so unnatural, so toxic. It is. I, yeah. I think we're done with him, are we? Because um, because I want to okay. I want to pick I, I want to pick your brain on something else. Because okay. you you touched a very good point. Yeah, take him off. Um, you mm. you you touched on a very good point. I I want to know your thoughts on. You said that Islam is unnatural, but. There are some scholars that I've heard who have a great pull in Pakistan and India. Uh, one of them is Javed Ramdi. He's the face of this liberal Islam and he's a very serious thinker, but he only operates in the Urdu and Hindi domain. He tries to sell this idea that Islam is very, it's very natural. It's, it's, it's a default position to be a God believer because and I, I know it's a bad idea, but but I want to go into it from your point, which you touched on, like how it is unnatural and how you elaborate that. Um, and he says that every culture all around the world, every all these cultures that have been independent of each other, they all ask this question that we must have come from somewhere. Someone must have created us. So he says yeah. that God installed this instinct in you to... To ask this question, who is my um, who, who is my creator? So it's not the question of whether I've been created by someone or not. It's the question, the right question is, which one of them is my creator? And of course, him being a Muslim is like, Allah is a real creator. So how do you answer that? Because I'm, I'm like, Islam is the most unnatural religion in the world. Like, it, it doesn't make you do natural things. It actually compels you to do things that are against your nature. How do you answer that? And I'm going to play a video to you and I'm going to give a very um, uh, vivid example against it. Okay, so first of all, even if we assume that was true, which I will tell you why it's not, let's say like it's true that we all naturally, without even any impact from society, have this innate internal desire I mean, to, yeah. to know what, who's, how are we here, who's God, who created us, Okay. Um, even if that was true, what does that prove? That's a you know that's a very very famous logical fallacy, which I think a lot of people here now are familiar with, which is appeal to nature. Just because something is natural, it doesn't make it correct, right? So we, for example, we have some innate desires for violence, like a lot of it we suppress it. Um, that doesn't make violence okay. Uh, we have we also have a lot of other innate desires that are that makes us come up with wrong conclusions which actually it's the part of the nature that we're born with so here's the thing the, that so it's an it's an appeal to nature which is completely flawed but it's also the premise of it is also incorrect because we don't actually have that natural desires there are certain natural desires that we do have that leads to us eventually creating gods but a desire for god is not there let me give you an example. Humans, I think you know more about this, Harrison, than me. Humans have been around on planet Earth for around uh, 400,000 years. So uh, the number keeps going up and now, like, I think right, right now they're saying around about 300,000 years. Yeah. 300,000. Okay. 300, the line 000. gets blurry because yeah. the, yeah. Mm. yeah. So mo throughout this history, we did have belief in superstitions and um, things that we could call, you know, um, supernatural or maybe even religion but do we have gods during this history do we have a god belief in god no we didn't we believed in we believed in a afterlife for most of it for a lot of it we believed in we believed in some spirits uh but we did we believe in a creator of the whole world no we didn't do we believe that in spirits is um we had animism uh, we had what about uh, even the Aboriginal myths yeah. are the, even Aboriginal yeah. myths are very unique like that. You're, you're right; it's all about spirits and afterlife, and it's not really central deity that is creating 
the whole universe. No. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we we had gods, pantheons of gods, since we had civilization, not since we had humans. So the history of gods is like ten thousand, twelve thousand years old. The history of superstition and um, you know religion or belief in afterlife that's hundreds of thousands of years old but gods it's a very new concept or at least an I mean, organized religion organized religion is definitely uh, 10,000 years old i mean you we can't find anything before no, that yeah but but before the organized religion these things that we believed in were not creators of the world they were not the creators of everything even when we started having organized religions we had gods and main gods and other gods and they had managerial roles mostly they didn't have like a, they weren't like the creator of everything that was right so that was that's a very much that's a very new concept like we didn't have that for most of human history most of not recorded human history but human history as a whole so if this is supposed to be a natural thing then how come the humans throughout nature, like it seems like it's a product, gods are a product of civilization, not just our pure, pure natural brain, because we didn't have gods for most of the history. But we did have certain needs. It would be difficult to ascertain, is, though. Having Saying that there was no concept of God would be a pretty big leap of faith because we just wouldn't be able to tell much. I mean, all the in archaeology, we, all, all the evidence that we find of afterlife, burial, and doing some ceremonies, we find that evidence, but that's just through artifacts uh, that are left behind. There's no written history. That's why we can't tell what exactly did they believe in. Did they have a central god or not? So I think mm. historians no. don't really agree on that, that there was no concept of god. Oh, but no, they do. Can, but we, no, the, the, there's a lot of other historians too. Like I think no, no. Sapien. Uh, okay. No, no, no. So, so here's the thing. So the details are blurry. But there are many key things that we can't say anything for certain, obviously. Okay, but the it, there's a if you actually go look at the studies, there are a lot of detail. Like based on the evidence that we have about what early humans believed in, there is a lot of detailed study on this. Okay, and we have a lot of conclusions, a, a lot of very detailed conclusions, and a lot of it, a lot of it, not all of it, but a lot of it is the creed part. Okay, and not having, not having. Uh, gods, as we know what gods are today, is something pretty unanimous. This is pretty clear. Like, this is something that was, we could actually see, it's actually very interesting. We could see the evolution of these be beliefs step by step through all the evidence that people have left behind, right? Ex we could see exactly at one point um, animism started, at one point belief in afterlife started uh, at what point other beliefs uh, what the roles of these spirits what the roles of different um, um religious figures like people what the people who are supposed to be kind of like our priests today exactly what role they played in society and what beliefs they use as an excuse to make that person have that role so these are actually very very deep uh, studied in, in in a lot of detail but again not everything is 100 percent. but what we know almost right now with a high degree of certainty is that the concept of gods uh, was much, much more recent. And again, recent, when we're talking about 400,000 years of history, you might think 10,000 years uh, is a long time ago, but if you keep that all of our history in mind, that's actually will become quite recent. So there's that. However, I do want to touch upon this thing that we do have certain natural desires. That is, you know, you're reading something else. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You're muted. So um, we do have certain natural desires, though, that does lead to having believing God, right? So, for example, we do believe we do see pat we have pattern recognition. So humans have a very hypersensitive pattern recognition, and we see patterns where pattern do patterns don't exist. So that is natural. We and that had an evolutionary advantage, which I'm not going to get into. We do see agency where agency doesn't exist, and again, that had an evolutionary benefit um, that helped our survival. However, because of pattern recognition and because of um, agency, seeing agency where doesn't ag agency doesn't exist, that is our natural desires that we have, natural um, uh, characteristics that we have, it, and those natural desires and characteristics eventually lead to and a whole bunch of other things. For example, belonging to a community, uh, following your tribe, 
uh, all of that, f uh, finding a sense of awe, finding a sense of meaning, all of these things, all of these desires that had uh, at some point benefited us for our survival led to us creating gods. But that doesn't mean gods are real. That just means that we just have a desire to create gods. Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I, I disagree with a few things, but I think overall I agree with it. That because there's a high uncertainty of uh, of knowing, for example, burial rituals have been observed, but it is difficult to say. But it's, but it's possible that different historians, different archaeologists have different conclusions. But overall, your point stands that appeal to nature is wrong it, uh, just because we feel that something exists in nature or what we feel like something might be true doesn't make it true so what what's the other point um uh, that you wanted to make that it, uh, that how islam is unnatural oh yeah about islam well i mean islam again it it matters what we mean by na unnatural because based on one definition certain definitions of natural and unnatural everything humans do at the end of the day is natural because we are animals and animals whatever animal do is part of nature okay but when it comes to saying what, what we mean by unnatural uh, it means uh, based on our innate characteristics uh, it's very unproductive and unhelpful to uh, flourishing and happiness and increasing well-beings, right? So it's unnatural in the sense that, based on our natural desires and this, um, needs, uh, there are there are better ways to make us achieve our goals and happiness and well-being. And Islam, Islam and its methods goes against our nature. So, for example, we need um we, there, there's a there's a me so islam is a meme and what it does for the survival of the mean is not necessarily at the in, within the interest of its members which is the individual within that meme because it, as a system as a meme it does whatever it needs to do to increase the chances of it of the survival of the meme itself which is islam and it will sacrifice the members of that the happiness and the well-beings of the members of the meme to make sure that it better itself so if if that even if that means more misery and less um, well-being for each of its members, like the Muslims that are in there. So, for example, we know that we need um, we need um, human contact. We need um, kind with, with with not just with the members of our own gender, but with members of uh, the opposite gender. We need to what one of the most one of the best ways to increase happiness is for us to find. Po proper partners and proper mates and that is done by you know courtship and you know flirting and um i don't know making bonds people, basically yeah just making yeah. bonds basically intermingling making, which intermingling. is what Aligama was just saying that intermingling like he was presenting yes. that as such a bad thing it's, yeah it, making yeah making mistakes um, having bad sex, so you like, so you fail, so you learn from your failures. Like, so, so here's you know, throughout history, throughout human civilization, we try to uh, the history of human civilization, we make a lot of mistakes, sometimes really bad mistakes, right? Um, and we say the wrong things, and we have we we embarrass ourselves, um, and we have sex that is horrible. But we learn. We learn so that eventually when we, you know, how, think about how important part of your life is finding an ideal partner, right? It, but imagine you making all those, those mistakes that you're supposed to learn from after you settle with the partner that you're supposed to have. That is unnatural. That is not how it's supposed to happen. You're supposed to practice um, you know, young boys and girls are supposed to practice and make their mistakes before they eventually settle with somebody and make a family with them, not after. That is, that's not how it's done. So you make, uh, you, you know, you go, you have make a lot of awkward uh, statements to girls and, you know, and the other way around. You have sex that was not enjoyable. Um, and then you learn, you, you start learning about your sexuality and you also start learning about proper communication methods. And eventually and you learn, you, that. Islam forbids that. And that is horrible because now you are making decisions about one of the most important, one of the most important decisions of your life without any practice, without all the failures that helps you grow. I, 
Yeah, I agree with all of them. And but here's one video that I wanted to play. I, I actually mm -hmm. reviewed it for my Urdu audience. I'm going to do that with you guys. Um, just to steal man Javed Ramdi's point, and I'm sure he's borrowed it from because he calls himself a student of Farahi school of thought, and Madudi um, uh, was a student of Farahi. Um, so he says that, for example, it's human nature to be clean, to wanting to be clean, you know. So that's why Allah may has ordered you to be clean. Uh, cleanliness, cleanliness or hygiene is half the faith, you know, things like that. So there's so many other things that he that, that, that pick these bits out. But have a look at this video. I genuinely believe Islam is the Islam, even you, as you said, that even if you uh, appeal to nature, that is still not a good position to be in. But even in that case, Islam is not appealing to nature correctly either, because one of the strongest forces of nature are the love between a parent and, and, and his or her offspring. That's the strongest thing. You know, a mother would jump in front in, in fire to save her baby. There's there's no two ways about it. P people have done amazing, mothers have done amazing things, then the fathers, etc. Have a look at this one. Islam specifically stops you from doing that. Have a listen to this video. Um sorry, give me a second. Oh, where is it? Oh, I had it. Uh where did it go? Where did it go? Actually, just just cover me for a second. Let me find that video. Because I think well, I, I have that. another video. Oh yeah, yeah I found sure. it. I found it. Found it. Found it. Okay, I found it. So have a listen to this video. Yeah, I, I know it's kind of like a broken record. You'd be like, oh come on, guys, what is this? But it is important for me to highlight that that those people who claim that Islam is a religion of nature, it's not. It, it, you know, like it's in our it's our innate desire, and Islam brings people together. No, one of the most strongest bonds that we witness is that of a mother and a child and islam doesn't even let let that go have a look at this one this and not, not only this mother and father just basically i mean relationship between um uh, family members listen to this guy it happens to somebody who leaves islam they don't want to be Muslim anymore. They don't believe. Uh, and it depends at the first. It depends about my personal opinion and about hmm. Islam opinion. Your opinion. My opinion? Yeah. I am Muslim and I will take the Islam opinion. <laughs> so you basically first said, <laughs> I have two opinions, my personal opinion and Islamic opinion. And I thought, okay, it's like he's going to give the Islamic opinion that oh, Islam, psh, kill him. But my personal opinion is don't kill him. But then he might have thought, hang on a second. If I say that, then that would that would be contradicting Islamic opinion, and I might lose my own head. So no, 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 I have the same opinion. No, no, no. I have two opinions, but they're both the same. <laughs> <laughs> so it just tells you how, you know, it goes against your nature. It's human nature to be yeah, nice yeah, to yeah, others. Yes, <laughs> that's a bad. You know what? That's a better. That's a better example that you're giving because this person. He wants, has, nice. have, he wants to be nice. It's human nature to want to be nice. It doesn't make sense for you to want to be yeah. like killing somebody because they just have a different opinion. So you can see that's that's such a good example, Harris. You can but see it, the internal struggle. There's a there's a there's a mini Islam in his head and a mini no. human in his head fighting <laughs> with each other. And the Islam is like, no, no, no to humanity, no to your no, humanism. humanity. <laughs> and, and, it's and, and no, it actually it actually it actually gets funnier. Listen to this. To uh, get back to Islam. If you want to get back to Islam, uh, we don't live now in uh, Islam state, so that uh, it's up to him. But the uh, Islam uh, status, he needs to die. Yeah, he needs to he die. Needs to die. <laughs> look at his look at his face. He is like mm. <laughs> he didn't want to say he, that. That's an embarrassed. Yeah. That's an embarrassed smile, isn't it? It's like oh, you look know, like yeah. like I don't, I don't have. You know, that's a sign that he's admitting. Like, yeah, I screwed up. This is bad. I know this is bad, but yeah, it's his love. What are you gonna do? Like, what, what are you gonna, gonna do? do? <laughs> oh my no, god! I mean, but it gets even better. Mm. Listen to this. Mm. Okay. So if you have a brother, if your brother says, I am leaving Islam, I don't believe. I can't say that. I didn't put in this situation. Maybe my oh. brother, I would choose another thing, actually, because you know. Oh, my God. Brother. Of course, that's the thing. But someone you don't know, you think they should die. So for the brother, he said, wow, nah, I don't want him dead. See the conflict. 
in people's minds. Yes. And, and again, like I'm, I'm going to say, okay, good on you. Thank you. You're a better person because there, there are people out there who do say that, oh, if my brother, my son, anyone who did it, I'll kill him. People do say these kind of horrible things, but at least he's a better person than saying, no, he wouldn't do it. Um, <laughs> no, but look, this is like, look at the levels of um, Islam influencing you, right? Yeah. So try to destroy your humanism. It may be like somewhat successful, but Altruism. trying to destroy your family bond, like not that successful with this guy. So you, there's different degrees of Muslim. How much, how much of Islam in your brain has managed to be able to... Um, to take over your emotional, your human need for kindness. Okay. For this guy, okay, a stranger, I guess we got, I guess, I guess the man got to go. Your brother, ah, oh, come on, nah, I'm not my brother, not my brother. But if he was a more proper Muslim, of course, Muslim. even my brother, if he was more Muslim than another Muslim that was like more. You know more Muslim than this guy. He was like, so this is guys. This is like that's why you shouldn't see as how Islamic and Muslim is. It's not a binary, okay? It's like a different degrees, okay? And this guy, Islam hasn't been able to completely destroy this man's humanity because he would not want to kill his own brother. Exactly, but but <laughs> such a simple point, <laughs> such a. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but, but listen, the poor guy, you gotta give him credit. It's such a I'm in Wim 2023, and we have these fully grown people. This is this is not you're not asking him to explain to me that how can an electron be at two places at the same time, or explain to me what quantum entanglement is, or how how heavier element uh, are formed. You're not asking them these 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 complicated questions you're asking them a simple question and all you have to do is to be logically consistent but you can't you know why because it's islam right. so when you make a claim that islam is oh you know it, it's natural islam brings you close to your nature everything is whatever we're doing it's innate in us bs so listen to this now now he asks he's like oh but anyone else because you know the feelings of brother of course that's the thing but someone you don't hmm. know you think they should die for me i don't like blood ah for me but uh, well, nobody does mm. but this is the rules of islam and uh, this is the mm. rules of this uh that, that's just Islam. Oh, I feel but, sad. I feel bad for him, man. Oh my but god! I mean, but Look how, is, how Islam is trying. Islam is trying to suffocate his humanity, and it's still they're still there. It's there. It's there. It cannot completely suffocate it. But isn't that the battle of ideas? That's what they talk about. Isn't that the battle of ideas? Yes. So we have these humanist, pluralistic values of you know egalitarian societies and being kinder to other people, altruism. You know, like all of these things. We're promoting those values, basically liberal values. That they're, they're, they're being. They're, they're, they're being thrown at them. And that's why people like Ali Dawas and, uh, and Akikachus and these guys, they said, no, no, this liberalism is, is, is criminal, you know, like destroying our youth and fertility rates going down, blah, blah, blah. But it actually directly comes from Islam. I know all of you guys know about the, um, uh, about the hadith that, you know, anyone who changes his religion, you can kill him. Uh, let me just show it for reference. Uh, By the way, YouTube, these are not our views. We are just reviewing other people's views. Okay, so we are condemning violence. We just we are against violence. We condemn it and all of that. The, uh, yeah. So the, the, there's so many hadiths that actually say that. Uh, this is Abu Hadi six nine two two as well that says that. Um, but it's actually in the Quran as well. Oh, sorry. Hang on. Um, this one. There's a hadith, Sahih Muslim forty four B, where Prophet Muhammad says that none of you is a believer until I am dearer to him than his child, his father, and the whole of mankind. So you have to love Muhammad more than everything in the world. You know, your, your mm. kids, your parents, everyone. This is everything is secondary. The talk about narcissism. Okay, so the same hadith in Sahih Bukhari 15 as well. But there's a Quranic verse, chapter 9, Surah Toba, verse number 23. It says, Oh, who you believe, do not take your fathers and your brothers as your friends. So this guy is basically, who said that oh, he's my brother, you know, like I'm, okay, fair enough. It doesn't say that kill your fathers and brother if they, if they go against, um, uh, if they are enemies of Allah or they don't believe in Allah. But it actually is saying that at least you can't have friendly relationships with them. And you know why? They have exegesis on that. It's like because they will corrupt you as well. And they would... Um, they, they, they would they would corrupt your mind and so so those people who say that islam appeals to your nature no it actually goes against everything sometimes yeah these things coincide so it's like for example yeah cleanliness is good for you so islam orders you cleanliness as well so it doesn't mean that you know you are 
um, that Islam is telling you to be natural and all the commands of Islam are natural. They're not. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you, do you want to show that Pakistani video? I need to go. I'm going to use the washroom while you show that one. But and then yeah. after that, after that, do you, do we have time to? I want to review this other video by the Smile to Jannah channel. Do we have time for that? Because this we one might have, like but I have, I have five minutes. I have a yeah. Okay, how long is it? It's nine minutes. But okay, I want you. Do you do the five it. minute one. I go. I I'll be right back. You do the five minute video of the Pakistan. No, no, but I want your thoughts show. on that too. Okay, so I'll. I'll talk I'm listening. No, no. I I this is Bluetooth. I can. I'm listening to what you're saying. Oh, so you're gonna talk no, as well. No, no. I'm gonna hear what you're saying, and then when I come back, I will give you my opinion. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 okay yeah, I'll be right back. Just you start then. Okay. All right, people, just like the good old days, just you and me, and welcome to another episode of Sultan's House of Sin. No, I mean, it's just going for a toilet break. I think it is more than just a toilet break. I don't know what that is. Okay, so I ran into this video where one of the guys, one of these ex-Muslims who used to listen to me and some other uh, people, I ran into his video. Uh, I don't know why it came up on my news feed. Afif, uh, he's an American... Pakistani origin ex-Muslim and he's sitting with this convert white convert his name is Hamza I think he's from Hamza's den I didn't know about him before but when I uh, when I googled his name or when I put his name Hamza Mayat uh, in the search engine it come came up as Hamza's den so I think he's the guy behind Hamza's den so he sits down with Afif Afif is one of those people who uh, always I'll says see about uh Afif is one of those people, he's like one of the nicest people on earth. And he, he's always telling me like, oh, Haris Bhai, please just, just be a bit nicer to this guy or anyone, whoever I'm engaging with. And I think this serves as a valuable lesson for Afif as well, that, you know, this is not the place to be nice to these people. Listen to this first five minutes um, and how aggressive these people are. And, I'm, and I wonder why they never come to people like Armin and myself. Listen to this. Uh, why not Islam? Uh, probably uh, the moral reasons are one of the biggest that I left Islam. Um, when did you leave Islam? I'm sorry? When uh, did you leave Islam? Uh, I would say about uh, so, uh, five years ago. Five years ago? Mm -hmm. Okay, go on. So uh, the worst aspect of Islam in, in uh, my view is the sex slavery. Um, sex slavery? Yes, sir. Uh, taking so your... So you left Islam because you didn't want a sex slave? No, no. I left Islam for a hundred reasons, but I just want to uh, raise some of the most important ones. So uh, with the why, why? Why? Okay, sorry. It's a very, it's a very straightforward answer. Instantly, you, you'd find out that he's he's just waiting for the gotcha moment and he's trying to dominate a nice person who's trying to have an honest conversation. Uh, he initially said that there's so many reasons, and I just like one of the reasons. Uh, he said the moral reasons. Morality is one thing that actually hurt him the most. And when you talk about morality, of course, there are other things as well. Like, okay, why do you have to kill a apostate? Why do you have to stone adulterers to death, etc.? But for him, it's sex slavery. It's the most disgusting thing for him. He finds it the most disgusting thing. But look at the way he phrases the question. Wait, wait, wait. That's yeah. I, I, before you pre before you please. That's 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 such a good comment, Harris, because it's so. It's so apparent that he's waiting. He's like like hunting. He just wants to wait for him to slip or say something and just catch him for saying, you know, a gachi, looking for a gachi moment. Also, yeah. also, do you see how he reacted to five years? Because these people mm -hmm. think like, if you leave Islam and you have left out of Islam for five years, you have, must have lost your mind for you to just not notice <laughs> how wrong that is. Yeah. 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 <laughs> five. Is it five years? Five years? What? How, how come have you survived this long? How come you haven't come back, brother? But listen. Yeah. <laughs> Why does sex slavery... And you left Islam for what? Christianity or atheism? Uh, atheism, sir. So you believe because oh. sex, sex slavery exists, you believe or existed you believe that that means god doesn't exist look at this. did he say that look no did he, did he not say, say that, that. <laughs> he tried to reduce his arguments to some nonsense like he's you're doing a straw man right in front of them the man oh, is right straw there man galore. straw man glow right to his face he's saying oh so yeah. since you saw sex in islam therefore you came to a conclusion that therefore god doesn't exist you 
did, he didn't say that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but, but but listen to this and and look, look at the fallacies afterwards as well. Uh, no. By the way, this is how these guys want to do dawa. This is how they want to yeah. attract people to Islam by strawmanning them to their face. They they're gonna uh, misrepresent them to their face. That's how yeah. he, he wants to do it. But uh, what I do believe is that uh, because sex slavery exists, it just means that uh, this religion was created by men to satisfy their sexual desires. Why, why, does, why does it mean that? What sex? Tell talk to me about sex slavery. What's sex slavery? Oh, okay, okay. Uh, sex slavery <laughs> just means that uh, Prophet Muhammad and his companions would go and uh, conquer other villages, and they would take uh, they would take the their property and take the women and girls and make them into sex slaves and distribute them to... Oh, them. Whoa, stop, 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 stop. Where'd you get this idea of sex slavery? Uh, if you can pull up a, a hadith, uh, that'd be great. Uh, Sahih Muslim, a hadith number one, four, five, I'm not six, pulling eight. up any hadith, man. You talk to me. Okay, sir. Uh, so what? Hang on. So this is a hadith, but which one hadith is it? If you can pull up a, a hadith, uh, that'd be great. Uh, Sahih Muslim, a hadith number one, four, five, I'm not six, pulling... One for what? Oh, hang on, I didn't hear it. I think anyway, I think I. Why I is think it, I Why is he so hostile? You Hamza, like, uh, who's this guy? Calm the f down. The guy is talking to you. So, like, actually, you know what? Be hostile. Be hostile. Because yeah, we good. can just see how. Yeah, Afif. Actually, no, I changed my mind. Okay, uh, we can see how nice and sweet and polite Afif is being here, and how hostile. Look at the response he's getting. This is really bad marketing for Islam, Hamza. You just look like you're gonna pounce. You got. You gonna. You wanna slu You wanna go after him. You wanna destroy him. And the guy is like keeping his tone, very polite, very friendly. I something like hats off to Afif. I don't know how. The, how how he manages to be this nice with the level of hostility that is coming at them. But this is really bad marketing for Islam, uh, Hamza. And like, you know why this is so bad, such a bad marketing? Because people understand this guy came out as said, I'm an atheist. And I was so happy that he said atheist rather than Christian or something. I don't know, some other mumbo jumbo, right? But this is such a good marketing right now here for, for atheism. Because a lot of Muslims like to believe a lot of us, atheists... A lot of us atheists are very aggressive too. But look at how cute, how yeah. nice this guy is. Yes, he's like, I wanna, he's so cute. I want to I wanna pull his cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, so, uh, oh, he's so adorable. I think he's so adorable. Okay, so but like... <laughs> yeah, I would have so I I but... bitten Hamza's head off by now. <laughs> I yeah, would have gone down. Too, like, so I did I say like, that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the, wait, I'm like, what if, what the, you're, are you an idiot? I didn't say that. Why, why, why don't you talk to me instead of putting words in my mouth? But if he's like, yes, sir, no, like, yeah, like, okay, oh, you don't want to bring up the hadith? Okay, I will bring up the hadith. Okay. <laughs> but this is such a good marketing because people, a lot of people assume that Accuse atheists us. are all just a holes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, just like, um, you know, the, the, the mass generalization. And he's coming, if they compare these two people here, they see like, oh, the, the, the Muslim guy is being the asshole in here, and the atheist guy is the polite, sweet uh, guy that is being so polite here. Yeah. So this is thank you, Afif. Thank you for giving us this. Oh, where did you take it off? No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm just showing the hadith. This is a hadith he was trying to bring up, by the way, 1456. Uh, so this hadith has been reported on the authority of Abu Sal. Blah, blah blah blah. They took captives, women, on the day of Otas who had their husbands. So their husbands were still alive. Okay. They were afraid mm. to have, so these companions of the prophet who had raided this village of Ota on the day of Atas, and mm -hmm. now they have ch put these men in chains. These guys are alive. Now they were afraid to have sexual intercourse with them when this verse was revealed, chapter four, uh, four verse 24, that, uh, and women already married, except those whom your right hand possesses. So basically, that's the one he's actually highlighting. He's saying that, okay, mm -hmm. I find this abhorrent that you have raided a neighboring village and you are, uh, their husbands are still alive. There's some other Turks as well. I, I can find that as well, but um, but you get the point. This is sex slavery. This is it. I don't think any of those women were saying, hey, thank you for putting our husbands in chains. Here I am, come and F me. As if anyone yeah. would do that, right? No, that just yeah. goes against logic. Okay, so but but I'll just destroy his argument as he goes along. But because Afif is so nice, and I think he was dominating him, that's why Afif just couldn't even make those points. But let's just make it. Hamza, if you watch this one on one, you and me, let's talk about it. Yeah, I've got a whole whole folder on hadiths that, and I'll show you what the sex slavery means. But look how he tries to gaslight him. Think of any hadith. You talk to me. Okay, sir. Uh, Sahih Muslim. Uh, where does one... sex slave? Show me where you find the word sex slave. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. Where so do I, I find it? You know, no, wait, look, you know what? You know what? It's as if I'm showing you a hadith, for example, <laughs> that Muhammad is like murdering a whole bunch of people for J people. I'm not going to say because you two might think that we're saying it, right? Uh, like cutting their heads off. I'm like, look, Muhammad is mass murdering these people. I'm like, like, where's the word wait mass murder? <laughs> is he? Where is, where is the word mass murder? Like, dude is saying that he's killing 300, 700, 700 of them in one day. It says right here, like, yes, That's all mass but murder. it doesn't say, but it doesn't say, it doesn't actually use the word mass murder, does it, Armin? Checkmate, Armin. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> what and, the and, hell? And use the word genocide. Genocide, one of the definitions of genocide is just removing, ethnically cleansing the place or just forcing them out. That also falls under genocide, right, Emma? Now, Jews and Christians, all of them were sent away from the from the Hijaz region. Now, that's also that also classified as genocide. But, hey, none of the classical scholars use the word genocide, so screw you. Why are you using the word genocide? That's oh the God. logic here. That's the logic. Anyway, listen to it. Uh, but Afif is so simple. He's such a nice guy. He didn't pick up on the fact that he's ca he's just going after the actual word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it doesn't actually say. Yeah, we're capturing women and having sex with them without their permission. But hey, it doesn't mention sex slavery. It doesn't have those words there. So I guess it doesn't have sex slavery. Okay. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yes. Surah Nisa verse, uh, Surah Nisa verse 20. No, 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 no. Tell me about sex slave. I want to hear this term sex slave. It's Nisa verse 24. It's sex slavery, you idiot. <laughs> That's, that is literally, that is what sex it is. Slavery. Sex slave. Sex slave. Captive women, bond women. It is literally because the Quran was so embarrassed of using the word, and there's so many other hadiths as well. Bring wrote. four, bring up four twenty four, bring up four guys. This, the entirety of Islam can be destroyed by this one verse. You don't need to know anything else about Islam except this verse in the Quran, and that is enough for you to piss on Islam. That's enough. This is the end. This one verse in the Quran is the end of Islam. Oh, yes, and, 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 and also, Amin, this is a verse of convenience. See, the hadith actually says at that moment when these guys wanted to have sex with the, or when they wanted to are ah, these women, they had chained, they had put their husbands in chain. They wanted to are ah, them, but they were re reluctant because they had more humanity in them than Prophet Muhammad and Islam. So they were reluctant to do it. And then conveniently, Prophet Muhammad gets this verse that also prohibited are uh, the women already bound in marriage so okay so women who are married and that is obviously means other women yeah. like christian women whatever all these women that they're married they're, those who are already married are prohibited to you except those who you have captured whilst fighting in allah's cause yes they are allowed so here, here's to be, yeah yeah this is a better translation so those so it's saying those who are married already, when I was a child, when I read this verse, I read the Persian translations. I, I even when I read the first line, okay, I was like, I was done. I was like, okay, this is insane. Okay, it says, Those who are uh, already married um, are prohibited to you. And here, except even if you don't read the rest, they're like, What the f you know, yeah, without reading the rest. That? Yeah, yeah what is again. coming? Basically, <laughs> the Quran is telling you that married woman, you cannot have sex with married woman, except that's it. Even without reading the rest, that is already a red line. Wait a minute. There are married women that I can have sex with. So a woman that has a husband, there are situations where I can have sex with them. The Quran is saying they're not prohibited to you, even though they have a husband. Who are these married women that I can have sex with, even though they have a husband? Okay, it says which which what is the exception? The exception is those who you have captured while fighting while whilst fighting in Allah's cause. So if you capture women in war, even if they have a husband, you could have sex with them. Yeah. This is sex slavery. This is sex slavery, and it's telling you that you could do that even if they have husbands. 
Yeah. I don't, do you need do you need to know anything else about Islam for you to understand that this is a false ideology? And, and Afif's original point that it seems like it's been made by someone, but by men to satisfy other men. Look at this. We we know the reason why this verse came. Look at this. This is another the same Muslim 1456. They took captives on the day of mm. Atas who had their husband. They were afraid to have sexual intercourse with them. And that's the time when this verse came. So obviously at that point, mm. there was no ruling from Allah that you can you can sleep with other married women. But no, no, there's an exception. We have this problem. What do we do? We have all these beautiful women. We have chained their husbands. What do we do? Like, you know, soldiers, what, what do soldiers want to do? They're always like, even in this modern day and age, we have to keep an eye on soldiers. The first thing that they do is to inflict pain and humiliation on the enemy. They are their women. That's what they do. They mm. did that in the Second World War. They're doing that now in Ukraine. That's what they do. So look at what Islam used. That. Islam, at least the, the Geneva Convention says, no, you cannot are any woman. You can't. But here, Islam codified it in the most holy book, the Quran. And this guy tells mm. us, oh, hang on, where does it say this? Where, where's the word sex slave? So hang look on. At so, this so, idiot. Yeah. Wait, look at yeah. this idiot in the comment section. The one true Muhammad, uh, Muhammadan is saying, Armin, this is what happened at that time, period. You moron. That's the problem. It's supposed to stay at that time. We know that people did evil shit back then. But one of them was your goddamn prophet, which is supposed to be the role model for all men at all time. The problem with religion is like it brings the values of that time, which we want to keep it at that time to the present. Okay, yeah, it happened at that time. I know, I know other people did it. But the, those other people are not being used as role models for how to behave today. You got that moron. We want to progress. Religion keeps us, keep us in the past. That's the, that's the whole problem that we have with religious morality. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so listen to, so let, let's watch the rest of it. Like it's so stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very, very quickly. We're only going to go up to here, five minutes. Okay. The women that you um, own. Where does it say sex slave? Um, where does it, oh my it, god, this guy's an idiot. Translate it into English. Oh, so in the English, where does it say sex slave? Um, those women that you that your right hands possess or that you acquired right. as a result of. And who who are these women? Uh, where does it say sex slave? Why are you obsessed with sex? I'm trying to understand. Does it say sex? Why is this now? Now you're gonna. What are you obsessed with? They're trying to get. Why obsessed with? This is such a. You know what he's trying to do? What an evil! What a pathetic little weasel, Hamza! Why are you obsessed with sex? Well, but why is your religion so obsessed with sex? Exactly. We're saying. What, look how he's trying to. He's trying to like paint atheists who have a problem with Islam as people who are upset. What like oh sex slavery? You have a problem with sex slavery? Sex, sex. You why are you saying sex so much? Why are you so obsessed with sex? Oh no, my no, god! To... What gaslighting? Mean, what, what, oh. I mean, hold, hold your energy because I'm I'm really loving your energy. Watch this. Look look how he gaslights him. He keeps on going. So sex slaves. Yeah, the reason I'm obsessed with it is because um, it justifies uh, rape as a result of war. Where, where does it, tell me anywhere in Islam you can force a woman to have sex with you. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Surah Nisa verse 24 says that all, well, Masonatu bin Nisai illa ma malakatay manukum, which just means that all married women are forbidden to you except uh, those whom your right hands possess. But where does it say you can force women to have sex with you? It I mean, just. Uh, you yeah, so so he's Are so you serious. Yeah, so, he's so, 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 so he's he's playing with his words here. So I have this example, Hamza. This is how stupid you are, and I know Hamza, your religion and this book that you converted to is embarrassing for you. So you have to rely on this. So it doesn't say that you can rape because consent is not even a thing in Islam. There is mm. no place in the Hadith or the Quran where it says that you need to obtain the permission off your wife before having sex with her. Forget about sex, slaves. There's no even consent for your wives. There's no consent. There's no marital rape considered in Islam. Now, okay, that's just wives, okay? Slaves, by virtue of it, and as you people love to tell us that back in those days, that's what they used to do. Okay, so if someone does something, if, that's, if, if, if something is a norm, then you come in and you try to reform that. Then you specifically say that you are not allowed to do that, right? Otherwise, it's status quo, right, Amin? Am I right? Yeah. So, for, for example, if we live in a world where everyone pisses while standing, all men 
piss while they stand. So, okay, then you're going to say, no, pissing is all right, but don't do it while standing. And Prophet Muhammad said it. He said, don't pee while stand, while, while you're standing, right? Because it's going to splash and you're going to go and uh, hell and blah, blah, blah. So he made it, he added a caveat, he added a condition. So Hamza, give me one verse or a hadith where it says that you need to obtain consent of your concubine. One verse and I'll know. One verse, okay? I don't need your freaking secondary com Harris. commentaries or whatever. One verse or hadith show me that you need to obtain a consent of your captive woman. Harris, they're captive women. They are out they are, they are slaves. When you have sex with your slaves, it's obviously without consent. The, everything they do is without consent, including sex. Even whatever they do, if they're cleaning your tent, that's without consent. That's the definition of being a slave. Do you think you are capable? Even if you tried, you can't have consensual sex with it, with your slave. Even if you make them to tell you that I consent, that is still not consensual because they're saying it from the position of being your slave. Also, within Islam, you don't even need consent from your wives, let alone your slaves. It's a wife's duty within Islam. We have specific hadith that when you want sex, your wife is not supposed to say no. Your wife is supposed to give you sex every time you want to have sex in Islam. And if that's the attitude you have in Islam about your wives, what the hell is the attitude with your sex slaves? Of course, there's no consent there as well. Also, we have hadith after hadith. We have Muhammad having sex on the very same day with a sex slave, with a slave, that on the very same day where he killed the, 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 the woman's brother, father, and husband. On that day, Muhammad had sex with her. Do you think, do you think she gave consent? Do you think the, the woman who Muhammad had sex with on the day that he had killed all his male member of, members of his family, she was like, yeah, sure. Of course, of course, Muhammad. We had, we have within within Islamic scripture, we have ha we have a guy that went with a sword to guard Muhammad. Yes, Rem you know, because yes. he was like Muhammad is like, why are you? Um, he he went to have sex with her, right? And this guy came with a sword, was standing there with a sword, yeah. and Muhammad is like, why are you? Why are you here? And he said. Well, because I'm worried that she might kill you. You just killed all her family. Yes. Oh, yes. You have it here? There it is. Yeah. That's uh, the Stabri, uh vo volume 8, page 1 185. It's highlighted between that. Yeah, that, that's it. So uh, he is just gaslighting. And I'm trying to find this video of Shabir Ali, where uh, Shabir Ali explained that too. He said, um, there is no... Sorry. There, there, there's no... Um, um, uh, consent for concubines there's there's no such thing as concubine because by virtue of her being a slave a slave does not have his consent it just doesn't wait a minute look at this idiot in the live chat Pakistani defense forces saying Christianity and Judaism and Hinduism also endorse slavery. Why only condemn Islam? Have we not condemned? Where have you been? Have we not condemned Christianity, Judaism, and Hinduism? Are you a moron? We have. We have. Like, do we have to mention them every goddamn time that we're crit criticizing Islam? Do we have to always mention that Christianity also sucks, that Judaism also sucks, that Hinduism also sucks? Do we have to say it every time, you idiot? Wh how do you, why do you assume that we haven't condemned those? Why do you assume that we haven't condemned those? Yeah, because he, um, it, it, it's, it's just natural with these people. They, they think that if you're talking about um, Islam, they, you know, why are you just talking? And also, is this guy... Um, they don't say no. Is it is, is this guy Hamza a Christian or a Hindu? We're, we're reviewing a video and we're, we're talking yeah. about him. We're weird. How weird would it be? Like, this Muslim is defending Islam, and we come out like, Oh, Christianity is so horrible, it condones uh, 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 slavery. What does that got to do with the video that we're watching? Stupid, stupid, unbelievable. I don't know.
<laughs> Wait a minute. I'm not gonna come. People are saying calm down. Why would I calm down? I like I like being this way. Don't tell me how <laughs> don't tone that. police me. Don't tone police me, guys. This is don't how police. I'm comfortable. I like being like this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um hang on a second. Let me let me let me let me play that again. Can you buy the oh, actually no? I'll add it that later. The Shabili video. Okay, so listen to this. I kind of have to uh, imply that because if you're no, you no, you imply that with your sick mind. I get that. Where does Islam teach this thing? Sick mind to have sex with your sick mind. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, watch, watch, watch how he turns it around. Watch. What an ass. What I'm trying to yeah. say is, um, if there's a married woman and you capture her and have sex with her while she's married to another man, where does it say you can force her to have sex? The key. You said rape. Rape yes, is physical violence and force against a woman to have sex against her will. Where right. are you getting this from? Uh, why would a married woman want to have sex? I'm interested, in your, I'm interested in your whys and whats and wherefores. I'm asking you, where does it say you can force a woman against her will and have sex with her? Just give a very simple answer to that, yeah? yeah. Slaves yeah. don't have. That's the status quo. Slaves don't have any consent. If you want to give consent to a slave, you would add that. Give me one verse. Give me one hadith where it says that you have to obtain consent of your s slave or concubine then you can have sex i'll we, we'll all take it back hamza but you we know you're embarrassed and that's why this is your pathetic little skill to do it and also look how how you know how they're trying to do um attacking you know uh, the the person rather than addressing the argument right yeah. they're like instead of like because instead of like looking at what the argument is and criticizing the argument, he's attacking Afif personally with your sick mind. Look at Afif, how nice and polite he's being. And Hamza is like, oh, you're just a sick, perverted person. This is what you're seeing with your sick mind, okay? Make it personal, Hamza. Make it personal. Good job. Even when somebody is being this polite and this, polite and this nice to you, just show, just show your tr true colors. I'm sure it's going to work wonders for you. And yeah, let me show you this. What 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 actually Shabir Ali and and there's no there's not even a disagreement in that. There's no disagreement. It's not like we're giving a fringe view or an Islamophobic yeah, yeah. view of sex slavery. You know, listen to this. What Shabir Ali has to say. So, what is Islam's view on concubines? A Muslim man. Wait, can you increase the audio? Yeah, this is a max. Is... This is a max. Oh. But but you've got subtitles as well. I hope you can read the subtitles. Yeah. Okay. okay. Four wives at once. In addition, in addition to the four wives, he can have an unlimited number of concubines. Um, which uh, see, he's using the word concubines. He didn't use the word sex slave. Oh, now show me concubines. where does it say concubines? Where does Wait, say... no, no, no. Here's the thing. Concub we know what concubines means. Concubines means sex slave. Okay. Yes. So let's bring Hamza to this guy. Okay, Hamza attack. What's his name again? Shabir. I forgot the doctor. Doctor Shabir Ali. Okay, Hamza. Tell Dr. Shabiali, where are you saying concubines? You sick mind. You're sick, perverse mind, Dr. Shabiali. Why? How, where are you getting this from? Where are you get, Where does it? Where in the Quran or the Hadith does it mention concubine? Is 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 Dr. Shabir Ali also sick in the mind, ha or Hamza? Or, or or he's also or does he also watch porn? Because that's what he's going to accuse. Uh, uh, oh my people. God! Yeah, watch, watch. Wait, yeah, no. Yeah, so Hamza. He should Hamza should tell Daniel Hayrechu that he has a sick mind. He should say Ali Davo has a sick mind. He should tell Muhammad Hijab has a sick mind. He should mention all the tafsirs, all this Islamic scholar within the 12, past 1200 years who have interpreted this Quranic verse as referring to sex slaves, as referring to concubines. All of these imams, all of these scholars, they all have been sick in the mind. Hamza, have they been watching porn? Yeah, it looks like. Okay, it, yeah. yeah. Refer to women who are basically uh, have they have slave status uh, when they are owned by uh, her master. Uh, a woman owned by her master um, has to freely give her herself to to the master. The master has the right to have uh, sexual relations with her as though she were one of his wives. And is there, how does, does consent play into this at all, or do, can we? The, the, the understanding is that by virtue of the fact that she's owned, uh, she, she does not have the right to, to consent. Uh, she uh, or to withhold herself from her master. Uh, the master has the full right over her, and her consent does not play anything in, in this uh, relationship. Boom! Boom! 
it's such a simple it's such it's so simple wow there is, there is absolutely there's not as i said there's it, there's not even a disagreement on that yeah like my 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 debate with daniel akikachu as well daniel akikachu spent half an hour explaining the why it's okay because he said what would you rather have harris would you rather have a nuclear bomb dropped on you or become a sex slave or if you're a woman become a sex slave of your conqueror in his view because at least if you're a sex slave, at least you're alive, is better than getting incinerated. That was his line of reasoning. This is your compatriot. <laughs> Wait, they get this comment. Pakistan Defense Force saying this Forget is Forget about him. He's a time he's waster. He's a time waster. I'm, I, no, no, I'm, that's I'm good. Say. No, no. No, okay. I, let me quickly answer. I am sure most Muslims disagree with slaves. I know because most Muslims are better than Islam. This is because most Muslims have not, their entire human, humanity has not been destroyed by Islam because Muslims know better than Islam, have better values than Islam. Okay, but yes, go on. Yeah. Okay, so, 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 so look at this. So he, first of all, this is his whole argument. There's no disagreement amongst classic scholarship that a concubine or what your right hand possesses is your sex slave. She has no consent over it because she's a slave. Okay. She's a slave by virtue of your slave. If you have a male slave, if you order him to go and, you know, sweep uh, in the next room, he has to do it. Okay. And then mm. there are punishments for, for that as well, because he does, he can't say, sorry, I don't want to do it today. He can't do it because he's a freaking slave. He's not your employee. Okay. He's a slave. He doesn't mm. have free will. And the same thing with sex with, with concubines as well, the sex slave. So now he turns that around. And listen to this. It doesn't say that explicitly. It, it doesn't say that. So it's just your mind coming up with that. Yes, sir. So please. Sir. So you poor guy, if he, he gave up. Oh yeah. He said it doesn't, doesn't he say said, Look at it. He <laughs> said, no, he changed what he said. I feel say it doesn't say that explicitly. Like it, Actually, it does say that explicitly. It just doesn't name it. We know what it's called. When you have sex without consent with your slaves, that's called sex slavery. Does it mention that word? No. And now Hamza is like, oh, so you you just came up with that. No, he hasn't. It's right there. Okay, but go on. And force a woman against her will and have sex with her. It doesn't say that explicitly. It's it doesn't say that. So it's just your mind coming up with that. Yes, sir. Aww. So please, oh so don't God. act like Aww. this is a teaching I of see. Islam and you've left Islam because of this teaching. What the hell? Even if we go by his dishonest, yeah, dishonest fuck. Even even if we go by his interpretation, okay, let's just assume for a moment that Hamza's interpretation is right. But what he qualified that with the statement, he qualified that with the statement that okay, so you can't say that you have left Islam because that is a teaching of Islam because that teaching part it implies two things that only Hamza's interpretation is right and Daniel Ha'atu and uh, Muhammad Hijab and uh, forget about them, they're just uh, Dawa online celebrities but shabir ali and so many muftis as the see all of these classical scholars they also understood it as what mm. what as how a thief understood it so yeah you can leave it that is the teaching of islam as professed by hundreds of classical scholars uh, it's just one of many uh many uh, no many no ideas. it's well it's the first one that's nonsense it's your own sick mind it's got no. nothing to do you're interpreting the text the way sick you want mind. to interpret it sick nowhere mind. in the okay. text and it's not sick as well because he's condemning condemning it. If he was yeah. sick, he, if he was sick, he would say, "Hey, I want to join her brother Hamza. I want to join your religion because you know what? I want to be like your prophet. I want to have uh, okay. I can't be like your prophet because he had a, he could have unlimited number of wives. I can't. But at least four is better than you know my one wife that that you know who who doesn't even listen to me because because she's so infected with this feminist virus so i want to i want to enter islam because in, in in on top of four wives i can also have countless number of sex slaves if he was saying yeah. that then you could say that you have a sick mind so he's condemning yeah, sick yes you're just you have the sick mind who's defending all this nonsense hamza a thief doesn't have a sick mind because he recognized that islam is sick and he doesn't want to have anything to do with it he has a he has a healthy mind you have the sick mind here but uh, what does it say you can force one is you know if you want to talk about those who you're right and possesses you have to treat them kindly and fairly how how does that attribute to kindly and fairly, fairly. Such, such a it's such a um <laughs> It's, su it's such a vague statement. Yeah, you, you can treat them kindly and fairly as long as they fulfill these obligations, i.e. give me sex whenever I want, do my things when I, whenever I order her to, then I, because there are, prescri there are prescribed punishments for disobedient slaves as well. Like, what the, the, like see how they, 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 he, no, no, Harris, like, you know what? 
we should give them that, okay? Because this is such a distraction when people say like, oh, the slaves were treated very well, okay? Don't, we shouldn't get into the argument like, no, they weren't treated well. Okay, they were treated amazingly, okay? It's kind of comparing between two people. One of them goes and kidnaps a girl from the street and brings her home into her basement um, and tortures her. And another person goes, another kidnaps another girl from the street and brings her home, puts her in the basement and treats her amazingly. Gives her the best food, air conditioning, PlayStation, everything, everything, <laughs> all the food that she wants, she just brings her. I was like, oh my God, what a nice guy. Look how she, she how he's I treating the person. Too. I want to be kidnapped. <laughs> Dude. Oh, did, did you kidnapped a person and you're she's there without her against her will in your basement? Are we supposed to congratulate you now that you're treating them well? The whole issue of slavery and sex slavery is evil. Okay, you might be a less evil sex slave or sex slaver or whatever they're called, but you're still evil. You're condoning sex slavery. It's kind of like the house n word that people say, like, oh, you know, when they wanted to abolish slavery in the United States, some people are like. No, we shouldn't abolish all slavery. Do you know some owners treat their slaves very well? Yeah. What an amazing argument. Where else are they going to go? If we if we free them, where are they going to go and live? How are they going to make a living? You know, like imagine that. That's literally the argument that what? Muslims use. And it took them 1,400 years to find them a decent home. You know, like when you tell them, this is a common argument that Muslims give. Oh, if you freed all these widowed women, the, the two arguments, where are they going to go? At least they have a house. Yeah, so what if they have to give sex to their uh, masters? But at least they have a house. They've got food. They've got roof over their head. But if you all, there's also a tactical reason for not releasing them as well, which is more evil. And they proudly boast about it and proudly admit it. That if you release them, they would go away from you. And they'll, they'll, they'll go to your enemies. They'll plot with them. And they'll come back with vengeance. So I'm like, mm. oh, okay. Uh, amazing. But listen to this, how he accuses them on porn. Sex slave. You have to feed them what you uh, eat. You have to clothe them what you clothe. You have to live where you live. Where does this imply some woman tied up under the stairs used for sex? All it means is that that's not what he said. That's you what have said, to. Yeah, you have. She has to legal. You. She has to legally provide you sex. Permissibility is halal. So, for example, if a blonde in the streets approaches me and wants to have sex with me, it's haram for me, even if she wants to. Okay, so. Allah has, has made it this situation now where these women who are captives of war, based upon what? Yeah, based upon the right defeat on. of the armies and such, and the women are left over, the men may have been killed, and the solution for them is to take them into your homes. Now, the question is, is these women are there, these By women force. are needs. Are they Of course, yes. Oh my God. By force, without their consent, they're slaves. Like, oh, you're saying so nice. Look at all these women. Look at these all these menless women. And also women who already have husbands as well. I'm going to do them an act of kindness and capture them by force. <laughs> and having, look how, how the audacity. You're, you're forcing upon yourself, upon women as sex slaves in war. And you act like you're doing them an act of kindness. Like, oh, wh where would these women be if I wasn't raping them? Jesus Christ, the audacity. You, yeah. you, we should be thanking you. Both. Should be thanking me. You should be actually thanking me for <laughs> showing them this guy. <laughs> thank you. All I, have thank to do you. Is, all, all I have to do is open my legs to you. Yeah. Thank you for you killed my husband. Where else am I gonna go? So can you keep me? Oh after my you God. There's also a story with with one of these women. She actually started crying when she saw the dead bodies of her relatives and uh, uh, of her people littered. And then Muhammad said to his son. Zaid, his adopted son, who, whose wife Muhammad also later on banged, uh, he said, oh, Zaid, you are so cruel. You know, you, her friends and relatives are lying dead and you're bringing these two girls. Um, uh, you're, you're making them see all of this. Come on, Zaid, you're so rude. Because one of the women went hysterical. She started crying. She started screaming. Muhammad said, oh, she's got a gin in her. Kick her out. And then Safiya was the other one. OK, um, listen to this. Are, they, are you halal for them? And this is a permission made, made down for this particular situation. But let me ask you, what's your solution for these women? Uh, how about uh, make them uh, into, take care of them like you would take care of your mother, or your your sister, or your daughter? Well, all these women? Yeah. Yeah, but I'm talking about the women whose husbands are alive. What, what are you on about? Uh, Surah uh, Nisa, verse 24. It's uh, all married women are forbidden yeah. to you except those whom your right hands possess. Free them. And, uh, yeah, so they have husbands. They already have husbands. 
Even if they didn't have him, even if you had killed their husband's know. freedom. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't even he know. He doesn't even Quran. he doesn't even know the Quranic verse. Like, oh, these women, they have nobody to care of them. The Quranic verse says that they already ha- they already have husbands, even the one who already have husbands. Yes. You idiot. No. Hamza, go read the Quran. Maybe you're you're ignorant about the verses in the Quran. Yeah, he did. He, 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 he was he was just fooled by I look out. And look how calmly Afif is answering, like, oh, like, but what would you, like, who would take care of them? Afif is like, maybe their husbands, because they have husbands, <laughs> so, so in the Quran. <laughs> I'm saying, I am saying, I am saying, even if they did not have husbands, you should free them, create employment, poverty. Solution to poverty <laughs> is not fucking them, okay? If that was a solution, or, then then legalize prostitution. Or marry them! <laughs> You exactly want to say them. You know what? You could ask them if they want to marry you. They just give them that. If this, if they know what the solution is for them, for their lives, better than you. If you want to marry them, and they were like, okay, then go for it. If that is the proper solution, they will tell you. But maybe, maybe ask them what they need. If you want to support them, maybe check with them instead of capturing them and forcing you or yourself upon them and be like, oh, I'm saving them. I'm sa- who? What would happen to them if I wasn't raping them? I don't know. Maybe ask them. Maybe ask them what they want. Literally. Instead of assuming, Jesus Christ. He just says that uh, during the Battle of Altas, uh, we captured uh, excellent Arab women and uh, excellent um, Arab desired women. them and our, our distance yeah. from our wives uh, became hard on us. So, yes. uh, so the concubines. Yeah, we have no issue with concubines. Oh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, that's what I'm the hell? Concubines are sex slaves. That's literally what it means. Concubines are literally sex Wait, slaves. So... You dickhead. Wait. So he's like, where is where he's? Oh my god. Um... Yeah. What, what, what does that mean? Yeah, he's like, he's like, where does it say sex slaves? And it says, oh, do we have concubines? No, he's, yeah, Concubine. no, but where does it say? No, I should say, where does it say concubine? Right hand possesses. Yeah. yeah, actually, that's what a good point. That's a good point. Hey, what Hamza, come. The, what you say, oh, those are concubines. Where does it say concubine? Where does it's it say me. concubine? Yeah, show me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, 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 yeah, I don't know who, who thinks that this guy is some, some, some genius. I don't know. Like, I think he probably doesn't even know the un- basics of Islam. But concubines are not sex yeah. slaves. They, they, they are. are. They are. The way they you are, mind, especially you yeah, yeah, listen, listen, listen to this. Yeah, no, no, hold on. Concubine, concubine, especially when you have your right hand. Concubine is a woman that you have sexual relation, a companion, sexual, you know, a sexual relationship with, and it's right next to your right hand possesses in war, in war, and then the hadith and the tafsir confirms that they have no free will, they have no choice to the matter. That's a literal definition of a sex slave. But yeah, go on. Way your mind is working is is not what you're thinking. Yeah. Can I ask you a question, honestly, Hafif? Do you watch porn? Uh, no. Sorry. Oh my god. Hey, Hamza. I do. I yeah. What's, yeah. And what does it got to do with any of this conversation? Uh, I, I I I I do watch porn, and I watch porn Hamza. where there's consent involved. Two consenting yes. adults, Hamza. The question here yeah. is not sex or no sex. The, cons- the question here is consent. But this is something, I think it's a, it's a concept that is too foreign for you. Yeah, exactly. I think you do. Why have you got sex on the mind? Sex on the brain? Uh, Quran is filled with sex. Hadiths. Muhammad's does life. Does Allah watch porn? Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> does Allah watch porn? Okay, it's in the Quran. He's talking about the Quranic verse. Based on this argument, Hamza, I'm sure Allah watches porn all the time. T- no, but ha- to be fair, though, Amin, I mean, if mm-hmm. there is an entity that has watched that has watched more porn and by a factor of billions, that's prof- that that that's Allah. He's watching everything. <laughs> but porn is, like you said, Harris, like you get porn is consensual. Like, you, you know, the porn is not as sick as your Quran, Hamza. Porn is a lot more it's better. Uh, ethical. It's better. It's better. Ethical. Yeah, think... yeah, it's ethical. It's a, porn is a lot more ethical than the Quran. Intensible. If you are influenced by the Quran, you are more sick in the mind than anybody that watches all the porn in the world because they are consensual. I mean, not all of the porn in the world. Yeah, but most yeah, of well, the we're only talking about yeah. one that is legalized. When, when, because legal. these guys attack legal. that legal porn is ethical because yeah. there's consenting adults involved. Now, 
the, there are some other factors as well, and obviously those criminals get arrested, but that's got nothing. The trying the the line that is trying to draw is that if you watch porn, therefore you are crazy, yeah. and your Allah has watched more porn than anyone else because he's watching it all the time, and not only just consensual porn he's watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Islam, Islam is a lot more worse for your mind than porn could ever be, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And, and and not to mention it involves, you know, minors as well. Yeah. Love and respect women. Look at this, look at this. I he, think you do. Why have you got sex on the mind? Sex on the brain? Uh, because uh, I, I love and respect women. Look, he said, I love and respect women. It's so Aww, cute, Afif. But it's so adorable, Afif. Oh, my God. Somebody. <laughs> love, love to, <laughs> love to Afif. Because, why do you have, like you have to submit? Because I respect women. Uh, yeah, you know what? We should... <laughs> And, and look, uh, and he's accusing him of being respect. sexually perverted. And he's accusing him of being sexually perverted. He's saying, "I find these things horrible. That there's sex slavery involved. This they, there is sex without consent involved. I I find it abhorrent." And he's saying, "Do you watch porn?" <laughs> like, sex on the mind, sex on the brain. Uh, because oh, I, I I love and respect women. Oh man! I'm sorry. Oh. I I love and respect women. That's why. Well, why have you got so why are you thinking in a filthy manner then every time a woman's involved it's got to be something filthy and sexy because she's married to another or something man degrading and... why, why can't you think of the purity of it that this woman she's in your situation she has needs yeah why, why can't you think in a positive why are you thinking in a a, a, a kind of degrading man. I, like, well, the I like how uh, Hamza is realizing how much he's failing. Okay. He's trying to paint him in a negative way and making him look like sick and disgusting. And Afif is just so mild and so polite and so calm and saying such a positive attitude towards women. And he just notices how much he's desperately trying to reduce him as to something disgusting in front yeah. of his audience. And he's failing so badly. I want to, so let's wrap this up, but I want to say like Afif, Afif likes to lecture me all the time. Actually, I'll actually show you uh, a comment as well. So I, I have made a... Where can we uh, get more of Afif? Yeah, 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 Afif usually watches our streams. Oh, I don't that's know why a chat. Oh, he has a, he has a channel? Yeah, Guys, go subscribe to Afif. Okay, Afif, so, so, uh, wait, can you link there? Can we put it in the chat? Yeah, we, we go, yeah Afif Khaja. Yeah, okay, people can see this. Okay, Afif, so, so if you put that in Afif your... Afif Khaja. So A-F-I-F, um, and that's his first name, last name, K-H-A-J-A. -A. Go and look for his uh, channel. Look look at this. He has only 264 subscribers. Guy, go subscribe to this channel. Support this man. He does... Yeah, yeah. we've got... We've got and go leave a comment on this video. We've got yeah. 250 people watching. Come on, guys. We need at least 100 more subscribers. Okay, so look at this. I left this comment. I said, he was incredibly rude. Tell him to have a chat with me, and I'll show him how sex slave equals rape. I can easily turn it around and say, show me where it says you need to seek the permission of your concubine. When someone is your slave, then by virtue of it, she doesn't have any consent. Even wives don't have consent. This guy is just making up his own Islam. Tell him to interview me. Um, so he goes, Adab, hai. Adab means hello. I will tell him when I go when he goes on the show next time. So, uh, Hamza, I think you're more than welcome to come here. You you call your little hole Hamza's den, and I think by the way, these guys are so such cowards that I remember Abdullah Samir once went to this den of Hamza, and Muhammad Ijab was there, and some other Muslims were there, and they didn't even let him on. They didn't even let Abdullah Samir on. Abdullah Samir is one of the most politest ex-Muslims out there. They didn't even let him on. Because you you don't want to engage with people. You don't want people airing your dirty laundry, Hamza. Uh, Hamza. And I am guarantee you he's not going to talk to us. Talk to me. Talk to Armin. And, uh, you know, and, and let me tell you, you're going to have to put your, um, you know, polite hat on. Because if you talk to me like that, that would have gone downhill. And just go watch my conversation with uh, uh, Jawad Hashmi as well. You give me respect, I'll give you respect, I'll, I'll talk to you politely. And I don't even believe in these moderated debates or something, kind of like one-on-one -on -one conversation. You take however long you want, and then I'll you shut up, and then I'll talk. So we can talk about sex slavery. This is my favorite topic. This is the most hideous, ugliest, and dirtiest part of Islam. And I know it embarrasses people. It embarrasses all of you because this religion that... Com that claims, on the one hand, it claims to be like, oh, we elevated the status of a woman. We we freed women. We gave them right to property. This is a religion of honor and respect and dignity. We dignified women. But on the other hand, you have this. You have sex slavery. 
Uh, I can show you Hadith after Hadith. Actually, no, I'll keep some because I, I have a whole folder. So I'll keep some for Hamza's interaction. So, yeah, this is how it is. Mm. I'm done. Let, okay. We've only got seven but, minutes left. Yeah. I don't know if you want to. No, no, no. That, we're good. We're good. Uh, guys, uh, if you want to leave us um, recommendation of vi on videos to watch. By the way, here's um, Afif's uh, uh, channel if you want to go subscribe. Um, and uh, Soha was mentioning that he was here earlier. Um, so I hope he sees that. I hope you guys go subscribe to his channel. But also, yeah. So, uh, so um, Harry Sultan's channel, make sure if you're watching there, make sure you like and subscribe, please. If you're watching on Secular Jihadist, make sure, please, you like and subscribe. And I have a new suggestion for people to send us recommendations on videos they want us to watch. So if you're a patron on either Harry Sultan's channel or on the Secular Jihadist channel, uh, send us... We, we will take our patron suggestions seriously, but please make sure you send us videos that are short, okay? It needs to be about Islam, and it needs to be short. Um, and send us your recommendation to either Harris Sultan or to me on Secular Jihadists, and we will look at them, and we will consider watching them um, and reviewing them and responding to them. Do you think that's a good, good. idea? That's excellent, yeah, of course. You. One from me, yeah. one from you, depending on how long the video is. Uh, we mm. will review it, and I think this is quite exciting. I like we we... We enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more. Yeah, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. I, 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 found, I found a lot more energy from you. You know, like, yeah, I don't yeah, know. People yeah. were telling you to calm down. I think at one point we had 250 people watching us. I think it's not bad. Yeah. I, I liked it. But I did, I, I want to, I have an announcement to make as well. So um, I have kind of re strategized my channel and I'm getting some really good results. Like, I mean, mm. I'm only uploading one video every two or three days um so obviously the quality of these videos has gone up and um uh, you know like there's more visuals involved editing is better uh, for example this one arab imam destroyed islam and it got forty-seven thousand views this other book this is a funny video new books redefining halal and haram basically they're saying anal sex is halal as well <laughs> that, that, that didn't like that one i think you could review my video um so that that one got eight thousand views this one my last video got 15 14 and a half thousand views so it's go and i'm about to this is my scripted video i researched on this and i've got a really good video here the history of blasphemy in pakistan um it's gonna go in about it's gonna be released in about two or three hours so i think you'll like it but what i want from guys is that please don't be stingy with likes because our videos mm -hmm. get demonetized so likes is the only way that it helps the youtube algorithm like 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 fair enough if you can't support the channel by becoming a member or a patron but please give it a thumbs up it doesn't hurt um because a lot of people just you know like forget about it the more you like, the more it's going to appear on people's recommendations. That's the key to success. My video, the one that got 45,000 views, it had like two and a half thousand likes compared to the one that got 8,000 likes, sorry, 8,000 uh, views. That one only got like 300 likes. So that sure. that's how much of a difference it makes. It, 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 it And in our analytics, it actually tells us that, oh, your people are watching your video longer than usual. That's why it's being recommended. And then it says, oh, your video has been liked. And that's why it it has been recommended to other people. So it matters. Please don't be stingy with like it doesn't cost, it doesn't hurt you. Okay, so I'm gonna to do I'm gonna take Harris's recommendation because my the videos that I do with editing, you know, it gets better views than you know my channel is a lot smaller. But the ones that I edit rather than cut from the streams does a lot better. Like for example, these ones get two thousand. Like everything gets under thousand. But when I do editing. Um, like I, I go and review uh, Ali Dava's videos, you know, or Daniel Hayraj's videos or Muhammad Hijab's videos. Um, those usually get a lot better views than the other ones. So if you guys like edited, short edited videos that reviews Dava channels like Muhammad Hijab, um, Ali Dava, uh, Smart Ujana, Daniel Hayraj, um, I'm going to do short, like less than 10 minutes videos that takes one of their videos and just destroys it, takes it piece by piece and criticizes it. Um, yeah, go to the Secular Jihadist YouTube channel and subscribe there because I'm going to stop doing the cut of the streams and just do post-only edited videos um, instead based on the recommendation that you're making. So if you'd like to see more criticism of that one videos, make sure you subscribe subscribe to the Secular Jihadist uh, YouTube channel as well. So yeah, I think this is a new, good new direction that we're getting.
Excellent. There needs to be a pushback against all this Islamic nonsense. So that's good. Yeah, I think this is like, yeah, the, I, just when we thought that, okay, the, these things are dying out, but no, they're, they're not. I mean, the amount of ridiculous ideas that are being purported as though they, they're really good, it's just mind blowing. I mean, I just, every time I run into an incredibly stupid video or an incredibly stupid person, like, I mean, I, I'm like, whoa, I thought, I, I mean, these ideas, I thought I left them 20 years ago. But no, they're still there. So, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah there has to be a pushback. So, Bra is saying, what about smile to general reaction? Yeah, I have a lot of smile to general reactions on my on the Secular Jihadist YouTube channel. So, go check that out. And I'm going to make a lot more smile to general YouTube reactions as well. He has a lot of, he's getting a lot of views. So, it's good to push back against that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So, that, that's it. That's about it. And thank you for being here, guys. And we'll see you guys all again next week, right? Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye. Well.